your mic on? Stop yelling at me. <laughs> so mean to your me. Your mic is on. The, the people are not going <laughs> to want you to be so mean to me. I don't know. I don't want to turn the camera on until you stop being mean to me. Well, then you're not going to turn the camera on. Cause I'm never going to stop. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! This guy. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> I am literally the uncle you don't let your children around tonight. <laughs> literally. <laughs> what? <laughs> Get your guns up! Woohoo! <laughs> Way this works, my friend. I think I'm supposed to be down here. I think I'm supposed to be in this one. I think so, Mathis. I think people have been demanding tonks, so we are painting a tonk, <laughs> damn it. Waffles, what's going on? Death by oh, Donut, no. Snake Man, Drago, Gabe, Zeb. Zeb, I, I can't recognize you, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I detract that. There's nobody named Zeb here. Dathar, Sidebound, what's going on, Waffles? Lovely ones. I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. I like that guy. Big Bob, what's going on, my friend? Just left Kenny for me. Winner! <laughs> Boy, fire, what's going on? BT Headshots, what's going on? Welcome back, guys. Assassin! What's happening, Darkness Dob? The Pervy Monk, welcome back! Welcome back! I actually look is like it, Welcome Back Cotter tonight, except is for it, is, like. Is this the, happening? I kind of look like the welcome back Cotter in, that you find in the ghetto in like living in a sleeping bag by the Traster dump. The Traster dump? Yeah. The, trast, the, the Traster dump. <laughs> that's a thing, right? <laughs> let me, uh, let me ask you guys. Where you live. That, that's a is, thing, right? <laughs> is, is Twitch going crazy on you guys tonight? Uh, I, yeah, I don't think so. I'm the nightmare of children. Oh my God. Twitch is being a straight asshole to me tonight. <laughs> it sounds like it's big. I mean, like, Deepbot doesn't work. So we've had to roll in, like, like the B team for giveaways. So we're, we're ready. We've got the B team giveaway raffle system up and running. So we still have wheel spins on the on on the chopping block tonight. But it's it's the B team. Like, take like, a look at, like, the browsers even different. Like, during this course of the show, like, the way, like, the follow and the browse button worked even kind of changed on me in Twitch. You know, Twitch going ahead and making things different that didn't need to be different and not telling anybody about it. That's a Why good thing to go. Donate $5 yeah. to the oh, they oh. did it. It's already I happening. It. I want to hear it. It's already happening. We've got this thing now. If you type if you type lots and lots of O's in your donation message, the bot will actually sing it. But the oh, bot the is dead. Broken. The bot is oh. dead, guys. So it won't work tonight I until the bot comes back. Night. <laughs> Rip. Like lay rip, like literally, I just keep hitting the deep bot connect button, Aww. and it says F U slow fuse. That's what the message says. It says F U slow fuse. Yeah, exactly. The touchiest of uncles is here. That would be me, hey. not you. Look at this hairdo. <laughs> Anybody Dude, I, just checking in who's hearing this interesting combo of characters talking in a line? That's slow fuse and gentastic. We're about to go over there, guys. Hey, 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 hey. I am known. As Trucker Rob Boss, I'll have you know. Rob are you truck? Are you Trucker Rob Boss? Let me this is Trucker on. Rob Boss, mother effer. <laughs> don't you get it wrong. Hammers down on Friday. That's right. I almost forgot my hat. Hold on. I got. <laughs> I got the. Oh, I got the literal skankiest of trucker hats on tonight. Like literally the sweat. Look at this sweat band on this freaking hat. I want you to know this is not. This is not like sepia wash. Yes. This is literally like my forehead. Creeping out into the outside world through this hat. I That's swear awesome. to God. Sacrifice That's disgusting. If you're cosplaying the kid from Stranger Things. Yes, yes. except I have teeth. Totally. Sorry. Except you have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, 10-4, you ready for you ready to bump docks and, and keep this this outlaw network alive with this convoy? This here slow fuse breaker breaker one nine coming through with the big upper headed eastbound <laughs> with the hammer down looking for Smokey. If anybody's out there, come back. Please. Just used everything we know about trucking in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. 
Dude, we are ready to get this going. I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, literally, I'm drinking alcoholic root beer and staring at a rhino. That's my life right now. Trucker Rob Boss needs to build a cat hat. Darkness, don't rub it in. I was nice enough to send that shit to Robbie B. Swear to God. Swear to God, next level painting. I don't even know that guy, and he loves us so much. Hugs and handies through the internet for that guy. He must be a real. He must be a real peach. That one. Prepare to receive load. Prepare to receive the load. We're docking. Bumpin' docks. Bumpin' right docks. <laughs> My bay doors are greased and prime, baby. Do it, ultramarine colors. Have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? What's up, C Cinderella? Cinderfella. What? what? If you're talking to me, Psycho Stevo. <laughs> this ain't no game here. Ash from Pokemon. <laughs> I've got my hat. My hat is my loser hat. See? I'm a loser hat. Hey, somebody likes <laughs> that it. hat is disgusting. Man. It is disgusting. Look disgusting. at this freaking thing. Look at that. You want to smell my hat? Here. You don't want to Here. smell it. Smell my hat. I can actually smell it. Like, Look, I can actually this smell is smell-o-vision. This is new tech coming to you live from the Long War Network. I want you guys to peep that sweatband. Right? Peep did you that. Did you trade that from a homeless guy down the street or what? Peep that, hey, we, we, we won't talk about his current situation, right? But peep that sweatband. It even has saturated the bill. Like the bill. This is no joke. I didn't weather this. Other than with my own inside coming outside stuff. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the uh, way we roll. It's, it's vile. It's good stuff, man. It would get, if we get uh, if we got up to like five dollars and sixty five cents in donations, I'll lick this hat. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> twenty dollars is twenty dollars, man. That's a <laughs> twenty dollars is still twenty dollars. <laughs> I ain't even joking. Word, word. Hey, l l let me jump into lurk mode. I, I, I want to like just cheer from the sidelines. That was a tough <laughs> show for me, man, with everything breaking on me. I'm not equipped to deal with that kind of stress. I'm gonna need some iced tea. <laughs> I'm not equipped. I need an adult. Oh my god. All right, brother. We love you. Love you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. Welcome everybody again and again and again. JP Great 87's wife Liz. We've been talking to you like in the real world, so <laughs> like you know you you can't. And it's not. It's your father. It's not not your father's repair. Not your no. This it's is best world's damn best damn. Root beer, root, it's which not. Is a lie. Which is a lie. It's a lying liar who lies. Root beer is what it really is. But other than that, you know. <laughs> you know that's what you got. Why Turk what's going on? Saldoc, my watch. favorite. 1999, baby. Puntimus, it's good to see Jen didn't kill me. I was pretending like you locked me in a closet earlier. Why? I don't know. Just go with it. <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> you should paint it as Imperial Fist. I think so, too. I am Nurgle because it's an Imperial Fist rhino for crying out loud. So if you smell a vision, is that why the boys aren't working? What? I've got two kinds of wet Creepy money. Uncle's Root Beer. Yeah, Psycho Steve. That's what it should be. Laser Pingu, thank you so much for the host. Welcome back, my friend. What's going on, everybody? Everybody. Welcome. Twin Irvin, what's going on? Kirby Jerusalem. I mean, at this point, you actually sweat sepia wash. Yes, yeah. exactly. Once you paint so long and you lick your brush enough, you just sweat paint. Forget it. Mystic Scorpio, thank you so much. Thank you for all the hosts. Thank you for all the newness. <laughs> welcome, welcome. If you've never been here before, my name is Jason. Rob Boss on Fridays with this insane, redonkulous hot wig and my sweaty hat. That's what I do. And uh, it is the Long War Trucker Network, and I'm bringing up the rear. And yes, I just said that live. And I don't even regret it. <laughs> and that over there's Jen, the good-looking one, who's actually smart and is, although she's a history major who taught English, so <laughs> let's not really get too far into it. Don't ask her. She's a little, she gets a little unbalanced when you start, you know, asking the deep questions. But other than that, we're good to go here on Friday night. We've got some adult beverages. I've also got a very tall glass of water. And, uh, yeah, we're going to paint a tank, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my little... <laughs> Ryan, thank, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Yeah. Much appreciated. Mucho appreciado. Not even words, but we'll play it off like we know a special language. <laughs> I am the bots aren't working. Better. I get it. Faceless. I feel better. <laughs> Drax, like, I see you made it out of the closet. Shh, we weren't supposed to talk about it. <laughs> Rolled up tarp on that rhino you made to show me the technique? No. No. You would only wish to be so lucky. Now, I didn't even think about that. That would have been really cool, but I didn't think about it, so we're not going to do it. There we go. But we'll do that again. 
The thing is, we can do that later. Like, we can paint the whole tank and then do the tarp thing after we paint the tank because we use the uh, the cellophane to protect the tank anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So we'll do that, though. Remind me. And once we get done with the tank or get it to a point like that, we'll, we'll make a tarp to uh, cover, like, the back half of the tank or something like that. Twinner. We get to do that to tutorial Sunday. So, yeah, Twinner, we're going to paint a tank in a different manner than what I'm going to show you. Twinner's got a personal, uh, like, a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with me on Sunday where we're also going to be painting a rhino. But uh, I've got this rhino that we're going to paint, and I figured it'd be good to show a different manner. There's a lot of different ways you can paint vehicles. So tonight we're going to focus on kind of an old, uh, like, 35th scale, uh, you know, scale modeling, like military painting panther tanks and things like that kind of way, uh, which is really cool and gives you a, a neat look and a great way to do some some weathering and stuff. We're going to run through that. But it's 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 one of many ways, in, and with 40K tanks, you kind of have to decide where you're trying to get to at the end before you start the whole thing. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. <clears throat> Worried about Sylvie's gave me my cupboard adventures. What? 1995? Why do you need? Why is everybody giving away my secrets? I told you, don't tell Jin. It's easy. Three words. Don't tell Jin. And somewhere along the line, the translation got messed up, and now she knows. Great. Thanks. I have to live with her. <laughs> Dirty dark. Thank you. Welcome for and the follow. Tell well, people thank our you. secrets. You go back in the closet. Thank you. Welcome for the fault. Please not the closet, mommy. <laughs> the, welcome. Thank. Thank. Thanks. Thanks a million. I'm speaking and me, not really good friends today. Just, you know, I've been up for a long time. We had to get up early. Get up early. Lotus Cobra, what's going on? No regrets. No regrets. Let's get the tattoo. No regrets. <laughs> Raven Faye, hey. You're off tomorrow. You get to stay up and watch us? Hell yes. That's the thing right there. That's the thing. Raven Fay is the, the sole reason that we own this guy. Oh, I can't reach him, though, because he's, like, protected by airbrush Thank racks. Thank you, Twitter. Twitter! I can't see that far. It's Twitter! I have old lady eyes. It's Twitter! Yay, future neighbors, JP. She's the reason we have this guy who's in... Look, he's invisible! Raven, how'd you do that? I have a bomb! I have a bomb! That's so awesome. I have a bomb! It's a bomb! It's gonna blow! No, it's this guy. Yes. It's this guy. This Raven Fay is the reason why we have this guy. And this guy is so good. He's so beautiful. <laughs> why don't you donate five dollars to the cause? Uh, hey, hey. Welcome, my friend. Thank and you. thank you. Kicking it off. Let's see. I don't even know where to put him now, so he doesn't die. He goes right there. That's the bomb snail. He's invisible snail. <laughs> JDA, what's going on? Ellie Newts, what's going on? Yeah, there you go. Thought isn't working, so no sound effect. Lick the hat. What was it? Five sixty-five. Was that it? Oh yeah, it was. Was that five it? Five something for five sure. Five something. I gotta lick the hat. I you did say I'd lick the hat, hat for like yeah. five sixty-five, and it's over. Which side? This one? Ah, uh, like that? <laughs> oh my God! Bless America! <laughs> that came from inside me. <laughs> what the balls is this hat made of? <laughs> It's okay. It's gonna cost more than five sixty-five from now on. <laughs> well, no, you already did it once. You don't need to do it again. Oh. <laughs> Is he drunk? No, I don't think so. He's not even had a full beer yet. <laughs> okay. House inspection went awesome. That made my eyes water. That was bad. That was not worth the money. I'm just saying. If anybody ever asks you to swick your swick your letty, let lick your sweaty hat for five sixty five, <laughs> go for ten bucks or something like that, please. <laughs> oh, still one more name. There's something I need to see in the whip gallery. You're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of me. The liquid your body rejected. Did you just have ice cream? My four year old is like this after ice cream. You didn't have ice cream horrible. either. That was horrible. Best 565 I've spent in a while. Since the current Space Wolves stain? Yes, it's just gray. This is all we're going to paint it. This is our stone gray rhino. It's urban camo for Imperial <laughs> Fist. It's going to be great. <laughs> from inside of me. <laughs> Hashtag. The afflicted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Kicking it with some drinks. Got some purple drink. Got some green drink. Oh, God, I think I'm going to die from licking my hat. That's horrible. That's horrible. Absolutely horrible. JP Gray, future neighbor. Living in the gimp room. Hashtag living in the gimp room. JP. Just paint it using paper towels. It's only a... Drac, you and I can't be friends any longer. 
<laughs> Twitter, Irvin, you bastard. You killed me. You realize that. The stank on my hat is literally going to cause me to have tetanus tomorrow. It's all because of you. I'm going to blame you even though I'm the one that said I'd do it. So, that's how I roll. Now chug the paint water. No, don't. What? Don't drink the paint water. Hell no. I don't know who's doing that, but they can have that shtick. I ain't <laughs> about to jump off that that cliff. Not a happening. Seb Seven, what's going on, man? Fantastic. It's going to be a while till you get to it. You didn't even know you won it, man. That's awesome. Delta, what's going on? Yeah, the house hunt. We signed a contract, I think Jen said, and we actually had the inspection on the house we have the contract on, and the inspection was flawless today, so... Big thumbs up there. Like, literally, the guy was hunting for things. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, and there's a little bit of chip in the ceramic on the tub. That was it. Like, that was the biggest thing literally wrong with the house. And we're like, yeah. we'll take it. Yay. But yeah, we're, we're well on our way on that one. I think oh. it's all going to go well. Let's oh, keep our no. fingers crossed. Pontimus Prime. Pontimus. I once had a drunk friend bet me all the money in my pocket. He'd drink gutter water. Poor fellow was sick for a few days for the low price of a quarter. Don't drink and bet, kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't ever think I'd say all the money in your pocket because that, <laughs> that one would be bad. That's, like, just not a good way to go, right? That's not a good one. That's a drunk purple, a drunk piece people thing. I'm reading the word purple. Two parts purple, one part water. Lick the wig? No way. Cat litter in the wig? Not yet. Not yet. We hang the wigs and the cat litter stays on the floor. P.S. Don't have cats. You just licked your brush after using typhus corrosion. You're dead too, Waffles. Great. I mean, I, I don't join you in the afterlife, my friend. Something called typhus. We will just... join you in the afterlife. <laughs> Liz, thanks. Ellie Dutes, how am I gonna shade that there, Rhino? I'm about to show you, baby. We're coming in hot. We're gonna do this the right way. I think. I don't know. I like I say in the title on my on my Facebook post. We're gonna pretend like we know what we're doing, and you guys are gonna make bad decisions. Here we go. Drink yeah. more. Paint low. Always a risky move in the day and age of cards, definitely. <laughs> All right, so, um, like I was saying, the, uh, the oh, uh, I guess we should do a little bit of house cleaning. It is Friday. It is Treasure Trove Friday. You guys know the drill. At 9 p.m. our time, which is exactly one hour and 15 minutes from now, we will be doing the drawing for the Treasure Trove giveaway. It's uh, valid for everybody in here. You don't have to do anything except type the keyword raffle. We're using the B team keyword raffle right now because the bots are down. <laughs> Folks, you know, you, if you're on Kenny's stream or any other stream, you've noticed that deep bot freaking shit the bed uh, for a lot of us. We don't know why. Uh, Checking the forums, they say that some of the login servers died. So I'm assuming it's the ones that connect to the West Coast US for whatever reason. So I've got it open here. It's playing music, but it is not connected, which means you're not going to get any commands. You're not going to be able to check your VIP status. Today is a righteous day for the common man, let me tell you, because VIP status is nix for the day. So that means everybody gets an equal attempt at all wheel spins, too. Think about that for a second. If you can elbow the person next to you, and if everybody right now were to donate a dollar, we would have wheel spins for the rest of the night, and everybody's on the same level, I'm just saying. Your chances of winning on the wheel tonight, best chances ever, because we can't do the VIP game. So there you go. So think about it. Can't check anything. Bot's dead. Uh, but we do have a giveaway system. We've got a keyword raffle that we can run, and the wheel is working fine. So everything's up on there. Uh, new stuff on the wheel for tonight is the triumvirate. We've got uh, uh, two of the gulls, two of the uh, the uh, the flying chick. I can't even remember her name. What the hell's her name? You know the drill. You know all these people. Two, two the Celestine. Bags. Two Celestines. Uh, two of the Belisariuses and two of the Inquisitor Gray Faxes are on there. As well, the dice bag is on there twice. And remember, this first bomb snail dice bag is the big one. It comes with a pound of Chess X custom dice. Um, so there you go. That's the only one that comes with it. And we put it up on there twice because we're sick of nobody winning the damn bag. So there you go. All the good stuff in the world. Let's paint a rhino. If the bot does come back on, we'll use that. I'll Uncle keep hitting connect. But I don't promise anything. I don't promise anything, man. It keeps yelling at me and saying, F you, slow fuse. Oh, I need a drink. You're not listening. That Uncle Tetsu is coming out here March 1st. All right, my friend, we will drink and eat food. It's so cold at work today to stand in the corner to warm. <laughs> we, will, we will eat food and drink and, things. And none of your commands are going to work. None of your okay. commands. None of them will Sorry. work. The bot is dead. Kaput, it's open and it's playing music. It won't connect. And so since the bot won't join chat, it won't do any of the chat things. So there you go. He's Rob Boss. Okay. There you go. Rob Boss. Trying to be cool? This is Rob Boss trying to be cool, and I'm failing. I hate it. It makes me sad. All right, let's paint tank. Y'all, he's just being annoying. <laughs> he's just trying to... He knows the bot's dead, so he's just trying all the things. 
great. That's oh. awesome. That's freaking great. It's I feel awesome. I like when someone has like a hashtag. Because the corner is 90 degrees, get it? Oh my like, god. Like a. Oh my god, dad point jokes. Witchcraft, you're just going to have to say it. Dad, I got to read them all? Somebody when they go it. exclamation point witchcraft, and Harry Potter and all of his wizard friends went straight to hell for practicing witchcraft. Yay! See, the bot works. <laughs> Oh God! They're gonna do. Party. They're gonna do party. Someone I don't even. All I know is how to answer it. I don't yeah. know how to do it. You guys will have you to take, do it. Uh, I, don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. All right, let's paint a rhino. Okay, so with vehicles, the big thing with vehicles is to know where you're trying to get. There's a couple of ways we could paint. Uh, you can. Oh, oh. What? I didn't get that one. The That's 90 a good degrees. One. The corner's, corners 90, 90 degrees. degrees. Yeah, vestiges. <laughs> vestiges. How much for Jen to lick the hat? You gotta ask her. No. You gotta ask her. She might have a number. One million dollars. Hey, hey. Yeah. I'll eat the hat for a million dollars. There's no treasure trove link. It'll just be a keyword raffle. Yeah. None of the commands work. The bot is dead. Long live the bot. That's the best he could do for robots. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, um, vehicles. You <laughs> can paint them. Kind of show, you can paint true. them just like we do with everything else that we paint on the Why channel. You, you can start you with a prime coat. And maybe it'll make you feel better. Absolutely. <laughs> Nice, here you go, coming out with a duck. Thank you. Thank you Everybody for the support. Else do it too. One million gazillion quintess, not even a number, Boshek. Under the bed with you, my friend. Until you learn how to count numbers. Uh so we can we can basically go through and paint vehicles the exact same way we do everything else. I could prime it black and then I could just start with my darks and, and spray up to my lights, get nice fades, uh, go back in and do all my highlights and be perfectly fine with that. One of the things that's really cool about vehicles, though, is that they give us a lot of flat surfaces to work with, a lot of open <laughs> space to break up. Uh, some people choose to do a lot of freehanding there. Uh, some people like to dry brush all the details simply. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. And because of that, a lot of people get stuck. Okay, what do I do? Uh, first off, airbrush. All right, is going to be the biggest thing. Doc Pox, thank you so much. Uh, Boshek returns under the bed. <laughs> um, so... Uh, one, of, uh, one of the biggest things is um, uh, being able to pick like how you want to weather it, what you're going for, how dirty is it going to be. In this case, we're not going for like super grunge. I will put some mud on the tracks after the fact, but I'm not going to worry about it. I didn't preload anything with a bunch of mud because I'm not going for like a super dirty effect. Uh, I want these to be pretty clean, not like staging grounds clean, but pretty clean. Um, uh, obviously we'll do a little bit of track mud. We'll do oil stains. Uh, we'll do a lot of weathering on it, but oh. any chipping that we do, uh, will just be done with brush. We're not going to use any chipping solution on this. I don't think, um, we'll decide when we get there. Uh, well actually we'll decide now and no, we're not going to use chipping solution. On it. Um, cause I think that's just overloading too much info on it at first. Why don't you donate $5 to the <laughs> BT headshots. Oh, you Coming in with a buck. Thank you, my friends. You don't like seeing people's feet? What? What? Dude, that's it. I'm showing you my feet. I don't care if Twitch bans me. The robot is filled with... The, the rhino is filled with robots? I don't think so. And we're not painting the inside. It's a command rhino, so it has like a satellite dish that goes on it. So, no. We're not painting it. All the doors are glued shut. Screw that nonsense. Um, but we do have all the Forge World Imperial Fist crap on it. This rhino is literally like 12 years old. So... Uh, what we're going to do is show you, I've, I've primed it gray, which is a, I, I never prime gray unless I'm going to use this particular method for paint. Uh, normally with vehicles, I go in and I just prime them black and I will work them up with the same kind of paint method that I'm doing now for 40K. I feel like 40K, if you, if you do this method that I'm about to show you, sometimes it'll stand apart from your army. Because of the way that we're painting our Imperial Fists, I can get away with it though. Um, because we're going in and doing a lot of pre-shade and uh and chipping effects and things like that on all of our imperial fists so we've got a, a large admech uh, contingent in our imperial fists so uh you know we're going in we're using a lot of of pre-shading with the deeper browns uh, the, and then very thin layers of yellow and then glazing with the yellows too so i'm not opposed to having the tank look more like i would treat a scale model like a 35th scale military model where i'm trying to do a more realistic diorama kind of sense and not the standard 40k high contrast you know uh miniature war game paint style so that's why i've chosen to do this so we will go through and uh show you how and the first thing we're going to want to do is take some white zoinks i'm just going to use white primer okay so our steinal res primer i use the steinal res gray 
for my first coat, right? And I layered <laughs> up about three coats. Bullshack. This is a complete pain in the ass uh, priming gray over rhinos because rhinos are gray, plastic. They suck because I can't see. Sapper Steve, I am a corner cutter. I am. <laughs> If, I will have you notice, though, to somewhat redeem myself, I do still have the front windshield movable, and I will be painting the windshields. So I'm not complete freaking corner cutter. Don't make me mad. Work shift ends in two minutes. What? What? Boshek, there's sharp pointy boxes under the bed. You're welcome to come back out then, Danny. Kai likes what's going on. What's the treasure trove link? There isn't one. I think somebody already answered you, but no. We do it straight here on the channel fully now. Uh, the first few times we did the offshore link uh, just so that we can uh, push people off to social media. We might Why introduce that like once a quarter again, but right now I'm not. <laughs> Zeb, are you kidding me? He said he wished, he dreamed last night he was a muffler, and I, I didn't see the rest, so I'm not going to tell that bad joke. Everyone a buck. Like see? Four Gen Z. I'm serious. We got, how many people we got in here? We can't even tell, because chat, I, the bot doesn't work and tell me. So literally, if everybody donates a buck, while wheel spins all night long. That's cheaper than coffee money, people. Let's give it away. Give it away. All right, here we go. This is what we're going to do. Uh, gray primer, white primer next to the airbrush is the goal. So I'm going to real quick. Donate $5 to the cause and maybe it'll hey, make you feel darkness. better. Darkness! Carrying it on. You guys can do this. You guys can do this. That would be, what, four wheel spins? Literally, four wheel spins? Yes. And everybody's on equal footing tonight. Not my not my plan. Blame DeepBot. No VIP bonuses tonight, guys. We do a wheel spin. Everybody's equal. This is the night of the common man right here. Thank you guys so much. All right. We will dump a little bit of primer. Uh, if you know how to use the Steino Res primer, we just run fast and loose with it in the pot. Boink. No mix. We don't thin it down. We just go after it. Hey, somebody likes us. So the first thing we're going to do... Hey, Cassis, welcome. Uh, the first thing we want to do is pick our highlight direction. I'm going to close the windshield on this. Um, pick our highlight direction. Some people like to do stuff like highlight from the ground up. It gives you a really, you know, kind of weird two-tone. Sapper hey, Steve coming through hot with five bucks. Thank you, my friend. You know there would be at least four slackers. So he's picking up for the slackers already. Brutaliter, <laughs> welcome, my friend. It appears as though you did win the community photo contest and you like to claim your prize. Rocket chicken, my man. Brutaliter, the way it worked this week, uh, as every week, you got bounced up to VIP status, which will do you absolutely no good tonight because the bot's dead. But other than that, we moved you to VIP bronze. Congratulations, my friend. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right. So I'm just going to take the tank. We're going to highlight top down like we would on any normal city. And uh, we're not going to worry about color placement right now. We're just going to start going in and Why lightly, you, you, you know. Cause and maybe it'll make you feel better. I can't read who that's from, but thank you. Yeah. Trajan. Trajan. Thank you, thank you. We're just going to go in, start this, working this highlight up. Is this one of your own or is this a question? What's that? Is this one of your own or is this a question? Uh, this is just one of the ones for our own. And our own ones. Craig Owen, welcome! Thank you. Thank you. Again, we're just going to work this highlight in. Top down. And again, working with the primer makes it super easy. These Steiner Res primers are really, really nice. As far as laying flat, not spotting. Oh no! Oh no! What? Gentleman friend said, "Oh dear, I just walked into my painting area. Cat has my airbrush on the ground, chewing on the hose." Not bueno. Aww. Killer cats. Why don't you donate five dollars to the cause, and maybe it'll make you feel Double better. Double deuce. Thank you. Double deuce. Twitter said, "I only have black airbrush primer for Sunday. Is that bad?" No. Nope, no, Twinner, that's why I said we're going to paint like this for back. tonight. Uh, yours, you won't need it. You, all you need is black primer. We're not going to do this same method for you on Sunday. But don't feel bad. All methods work. I'm just showing a different one since I figured we'd be focused on that one on Sunday. This would be a good way to see how the other half lives. What's that? 
horse just trying to request a song. That ain't gonna work, I bet friend. I know what song it is. That ain't gonna work, friend. We're on to you, boy. My dad would be like, boy, how big are the men where you come from? we we'll come back up here and highlight, brighten up this white right up here along this top edge on all these areas. Even as we go down here on the front, make sure you don't see how on the front here I'm not quite as bright to, I want the fade to match across this line. Okay, so as you go down on lower sections, don't get crazy and fade all the way to the bottom because it'll look funky because the rest of the tank is all trying to fade evenly. I'm using this line on the smokestacks as kind of my, my fade line. Right, so don't come down too far here. It'll start to look funky. Uh, these insets are going to be black, so I know I'm not going to do those. So that's the only reason I'm not hitting them. I already know in my head the, the insets are going to be black because it's Imperial. Yeah, Thanks, so the whole thing's going to be freaking yellow. Lotus Cobra! Nice! Thanks, everybody. Uh, they put this one once they this is the Sparmax. Review on? Uh, this is not. Oh, yeah, this is the Sparmax. Sorry, I'm sitting here priming. Yes, this is the Sparmax that I did the review on the, on the website for. This one is not bad. I uh, I have kind of, it's fallen a little bit out of my graces only because of the side mount cup, to be honest with you. It's a great Don't airbrush. Right, it's it, it, Raven Faith, thank you so much. Raven. You guys are awesome. Uh, only because of the side mount cup. And the reason for that is 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 weird because it gives you great sight line to what you're painting, right? Whenever we go, I'm not going to read all these out, guys, just because they're, they're constant, but understand we love every single one of you, all right? Okay, yeah, gentle start. Okay, so because you can stare right down the gun and see exactly what you're focused on. So I was really hyped about it. The problem is the the pipe itself, the side draft pipe, gets loaded with paint and it makes it extra hassle to clean. It's not it's not horrible. It just means that you're going to have to take the cup off more and clean that pipe with the pipe cleaner the same way you would clean out when you take the airbrush apart. Uh, so that's the only drawback to it. It works great. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, it doesn't, you know, like have any sort of disastrous issues with it. Um, it's just that that's a little bit annoying for me, right? And that's only because of the way that I, I kind of run with my cleaning. <laughs> Do what thou will. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. I'm going to go ahead and yank this paint off the tip real quick. White will gum the tip up pretty good, but I like to run it pretty uh, straight right out of the bottle. All right, so I'm going to go in. Let's do it again here. Again, just working that fade right up top. Laid it down to about that line on the smoke sack. Is it ever useful to prime a model white? What's that? Is, there, is it ever useful to prime a model white? We've talked about that on the stream. I've, I've painted a couple of models white, uh, from white primer. I don't particularly like it, but a lot of people do. Um, it depends. I work from my darks to lights when I paint, and so for me, working off a of black primer makes the most sense. Um, does that mean you have to do that? No, definitely not. Um, that's just the way I choose to do it. So white primer is, uh, is something that you can definitely choose to do if you're doing a lot of flesh tones. Uh, you want your colors to really pop as you lay them on, and then you're going to, you know, filter back your uh, darks in through washes or things like that. I tend to like paint from shadows to bright, so I work with only black primer, literally. Unless, I, unless I'm doing vehicles like what you see now, and then I'll use gray, right? And the only time that I'm using this white is just because of what you're seeing here. You go through and add a pre-highlight. Oh, wow, well, yeah, wow. Well. Get, oh really? We already got a wheel spin. Look at you guys killing it. I'm telling you. That's good stuff right there. Let me make sure I'm moving all of these wings and shit out of the way. I've got very good models back here that I would probably prefer to not get white overspray on. Because I'm going so fast and loose. Do the slow not work for donations tonight, then? What do you mean? 
uh, slow bucks is not a, like a, the currency doesn't matter. I will because VIP doesn't matter tonight. It's not going to matter whether or not it moves you. I will be keeping track of donations for tonight and updating Thank VIP you. once the bot is back on. So don't sweat that. Yeah. We'll still move you to uh, to your VIP status for Tuesday next week or Sunday actually, right? Okay. So again. <laughs> Why don't you donate five dollars to the cause? Here you go, JP Gray. JP. Holla holla, here's two dollar. All right, let's get this door. How did you guys do that? How what? It's the JP Gray 87 and wife Liz. Because oh, he gets to type put, it. They put it in. Yeah, gotcha. he gets to type it. Thank you guys. I miss this other door over here. Not really. <laughs> All right. So we've got a good fade from white down, and you'll see how we'll work that back up with blacks in a second. All right. But we want a good highlight coming down. We'll darken that up so you don't have to be super, you don't have to be worried so much about how bright that's going to make the side because we still are going to come back with our black. And the reason we do it light first instead of light last like we would normally, is, I'll show you that in a second, because we're going to do a lot of panel darkening around all of these panel lines on the tank as well. Okay, So you're always, when you're doing tanks, it's kind of reverse thought process from when we're doing a miniature. On a miniature, we would you know prime black, and then we would haze it back with a white uh, to give our, our pre-highlight, and then we wouldn't touch it again. Here we're going to haze it with the white like you're seeing, and then we're going to knock that back with black. And it will become evident to you why. I swear to God. Donate five dollars to the cause and maybe make you feel better. Kev Rob, are you kidding me? Got even out the one cent. That's the top of those lamps. I want to catch. Each one of these little panels here, even though they're far down, just to make sure I get them. Darkness is asking why you don't run the brush without the needle cover. Uh, the needle cover keeps your cone right. If you take this off, the air as it comes out of the nozzle is not uh, pointed anywhere, right? And so if you get like you can uh, you can get an erratic cone of uh, atomization out of the airbrush, right? This this thing is actually used for something, guys. Uh, because as the air comes out of here, if it doesn't have that cone, it literally will do what air does and go path of least resistance. So if there's a, you know, if there's just the even most infinitesimal point of paint on the nozzle opening, there's nothing to constrict the airflow. This, much like a jet nacelle, focuses everything forward. Okay, the one that is the crown, um, right? The night crown that we talk about that has the slits in the side will let it be a fan because it'll have the slits to the side, so the air will be focused top to bottom and narrow, but it'll be wide side to side, so it gives you a fan spray. Or you could put it top to bottom and you get a vertical fan, but yeah, these are these make a difference, okay? Especially, doing what we're doing now, it doesn't make as big of a deal, but if you get in close for tight work, it does, and so you just get used to doing it the same way. And Jen right. looks the hat, will never be a type on the wheel. But there are two dice bags on the wheel. And one of them comes with a pound of dice. Nice, get this. It needs that one color. What was that special color? Which maybe, one? Maybe mahogany? Mahogany? I gotta drink too? <laughs> God dang it, you people are killing me. You people are killing me. <laughs> the afflicted one. Uh, Actually, let's close this. Like any tips on larger models without an airbrush? Larger models without an airbrush are tough, right? Because anytime you, and I've never done one. anytime you go into a larger model and you don't have the ability to cover uh, and do your blends, you know, really uh, controlled like an airbrush does for you, you're always risking, you know, brush strokes and stuff. So the real key is work thin. Um, I usually don't work with anything bigger than like a number three brush, and I know that sounds kind of funny. Um, and it takes a long time to work that way. You could go bigger. Um, I choose not to, only because the uh, the paint control is a little off. If you do, so right, let's see if that I need it to do. Let's get in here. And... That's pretty good because we want that shadow underneath the front clip there. That's all right. 
Um, I wish there was a really good answer for you. Large models with a brush are a pain in the butt. You'll find that out the more and more you do it, and it's it's because you just don't have the ability to do those blends nicely. I don't care how good at blending you are, it's it's going to take you a ton of time. You know, this is the airbrush on a big model is really just for time savings. All right, and for coverage, even coverage without brush strokes. Right. So here on these doors, we've got to pick uh, kind of where we want to highlight. I'm going to highlight from the hinge section into the middle, assuming that, like, hands kind of grab the middle section. It would be kind of grimy. All right, so I'm going to do this. Rather than kind of for light, I'm going for weathering. All right, so I'm going to highlight this outer edge. My God, this white is killing me. Maybe we will thin this out. Give me a second. Get extra thin today, or extra hot and dry today in the valley. Is that the problem? Put a little water in my primer just to see if I can't get it to quit gumming up at the tip quite so fast. Nope, we haven't started yet, Dave. Raffles? Yeah. How many we got? One. 83. We're going towards two. Yep, give me a second. I want to keep running this white while I've got the airbrush filled, okay, guys? So give me a second, then we'll get into it. Power speckling bad. What the hell is the problem here, brush? from this front edge back up into this side here a little bit also right here on this corner back kind of block it in make sure you stick around tonight because in about 50 minutes we'll be doing the treasure trove giveaway Not going to worry about the gas, the jerry cans, and any of that kind of stuff, because that's all going to get painted with brush or airbrush later on. We're not really worried about trying to dump highlighter color on them. Good God. Really? I think I got a big gummy. <laughs> it was cold today, Saberstein. Whatever. It was. She's a wuss. Windy. She like, wore a coat into like Ikea, for crying out loud. Who does that? Degrees. Well, I did take it off once we were in there. But I did I left it on for a while, though. So cold. Again, from the hinges in. <laughs> Double Deuce would like to see a happy tree Why don't on you this. Donate $5 to the cause and you want to put a happy tree on it? Thanks, Renette. Yeah, a happy tree. I don't think that's happening. Maybe. Maybe. Are you feeling lucky? <laughs> you feeling lucky, punk? Are you? Do rhinos use fuel? What's that? Psycho Steve said, do rhinos use fuel? I figured they were nuclear. They can run on anything that burns, says Gabriel. So it's, uh, they run on Promethium, right? <laughs> Why don't you donate $5 to the cause and maybe it'll make you feel better. Disturbed, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Pushing us. I told you, man, it's yeah. easy. It's easy. Pinch the guy or girl on your left and be like, you know what? You're going to get me a wheel spin. Yeah, All right, we don't care about the gun. Promethium. That was, that's real. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is Ikea? That's not a real question. What's that? JP said, what is Ikea? Okay. It's a place that has lots of really questionable quality furniture that looks cool <laughs> at a very good price. And that if you're good with your own furniture building capabilities, you can hack the crap out of it and make really neat stuff. Very cool. That's what it's all about right there. But it's there. all like build it yourself. It's it's uh, Swedish? Uh, I think so, yeah. Swedish, yeah. Some sort of Scandinavian thing. Come on down, Captain Steve. You'll join us and the JPs and Uncle Touchy. 
We, we're we're we'll building literally the slow play. fuse army here in yeah. Phoenix, by the way. And we are all happy about it. We are going to start our own commune. Our own okay. miniature painting commune is about to happen. It's going to be like all the weirdos from the Twitch stream will be in here, like chanting during the stream. It's a Swedish s and club. There you go. <laughs> Ikea. Crazy. Sounds all right. <laughs> Sounds about right. He knows what it is. He's just a solo guy. <laughs> we spent a fair amount of time there today. It was fun. <laughs> Boshek said, I live in Ikea, and Rago said, oh, that's why you have so many beds to go under. See, they're on to you, brother. Can't tell all your secrets. All right, that's pretty good. We're not worried about too much here. We just want to get uh, really the sides on a tank like this. Rhinos, while being okay size, are not huge, right? So we just want to get a good fade on the sides. We know the fist is going to be black. So anything that was black, these insets, the fists. Uh, I'm sure I might even paint the smokestacks black, but I went there ahead and go. I wasn't sure about those yet. So we went ahead and did the fade on there. If we decide to do black, then we'll just do that. I think that would kind of look better to do the smokestacks in black. So I have a little bit more black to break up all the yellow. I have black, 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 and black across the side. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yellow on the smokestacks or black? Now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of thinking yellow. Black, black fist, black, and then keep these yellow because the insets will be black in the stacks. So maybe we'll do that. All right, so there we go. We got a good fade on there. Uh, front and back. Just go ahead and do it. Not so much on the back. Just get the door. Nothing on the bottom. I'm not worried about the bottom. Ellie right. just moved to Arizona. It's much cheaper, and San Diego's only six hours away. All right. Now let's kill this white because it's being a biatch. Do some black. We're gonna use the same airbrush. I don't like running primer through any of my other brushes this now that. This is just I one of his own, I think. Pretty much moved, moved this one to a primary priming brush. Thirteen months out of the year. Ah! Blue white paint all over myself. The side draft one is a, is a hard brush to like quick clean uh, because of that tube holds so much paint in the tube. It'll keep blowing paint back at you for a while. Of course, we're about to shove black down its throat, so we don't really have to have it be too clean. We just need the tip to be clean. Have I tried the Ultra Harder Steamback 2.5 nozzle that comes with Vallejo's model airbrush set? Uh, I've used Harder and Steamback 2.5 nozzles before. On the 2-in-1. Harder Steamback's just it's, a good, uh, just really a good machine. Really good fine atomization. You can't complain about a Harder and Steamback. Uh, some of the best quality components on the market as far as how they're made. I would put Harder and Steamback and Grex up against pretty much anybody, you know. Uh, but don't be fooled by name alone. Harder and Steamback costs a fortune. What's that? What's that? Drago said, you're coming to San Diego to visit them? I am? That's just what she said. They're coming here to visit us and get tattoos. Hey, somebody so likes Drago us. said, wait, you're coming to San Diego to visit too? Oh, she's just saying that she wants us to come to San Diego because they want oh. tattoos. Oh. <laughs> they just want tattoos. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. -up. Sorry, I missed it. JP Gray loves his heart in steam bags. This is a truth that cannot be untold. <laughs> All right, we're going to go same thing. Steiner Res Black Primer. Everything we're doing right now is with primer. I don't, at this stage of highlighting, I don't worry about wasting, you know, paint, paint. Right? May seem funny, but we ain't gonna waste no well, paint. Well, Ellie paint. said that she was gonna move to, she wants to move to San Diego. And I said you could move to Arizona. It's cheaper and it's only six hours from San Diego. And then somebody thought we were visiting San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> All right. said she heard me say. All right, so now what we're gonna do is dump this in and start, high, or start shading with the black. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just catch the bottom of these paneled edges. Um, none of you get a tattoo until I do. Tip <laughs> and throat sentence? I didn't hear that. Were you talking about tips and throat? What's this? What? I can't hear you. I'm airbrushing. What are you saying? <laughs> no, you're looking at me like, why did you hear me? I can't hear you. 
What are they saying? Um, I don't know. Did you say something about tip and throat? No. These people. Where do they come up with this stuff? I want to go pretty solid black right across the bottom, and then oh, I just want to kind of oh, hit that up. So like that. All right? So now we get with our white. Our gray starts disappearing to next to nothing, and we just get white down to black. Right? Especially when we're dealing with yellow, this is fine. The mid-tones kind of disappear in this mid-section here, and so we don't have much of the gray primer left, which is okay. All right? No, he's not in a tattoo shop. Nope, this is what we do full time. <laughs> I ain't got no time for no tattoo shops. Yes, you were telling me that today was. Again, on the bottom. <laughs> You're just looking for even coverage on this. You're not looking for any kind of, uh, you know, I say super specific kind of uh, lining at this point. We're just trying to make sure that we get a good shade in. Because the gray, if we were to just dump yellow on this right now, yeah, the yellow would be bright up here, but it wouldn't be near dark enough down here. And one of the things we're going to avoid is doing like a six color workup like we normally would, or like a four color workup. If we had just started with black primer, I would go in with burnt umber first. And then over burnt umber, we would do uh, maybe a mix of burnt umber and golden brown. And then after the golden brown, yellow ochre. And after the yellow ochre, medium yellow. You know, So we start doing that four-color workup like we normally do. Here, what we can do if we do all this pre-shade right on the tank is we can go in with golden brown first and avoid the dark browns altogether. Just straight golden brown and then right into our yellows. And we'll run them really thin and you'll see all this shading that we're doing. We'll start to pick up and carry in all that work for you. All right, so this you can do fast and loose as opposed to with your colors having to be much more specific in their placement if we were going on this with umbers. Step. Forgot about that. Step from the other side. Pretty good. Front section, real quick. Shading down from this Somebody clip, just in case we decide to keep this open. I want to get a little bit of shadow coming down here. Death or glory. Follow? Thanks for the follow. Thank you so much. Wish the bot was working. It's such a drag, isn't it? Well, I can sit up here. Well, that's good. I guess so, right? It's still popping up, at least. I just, if yeah. I'm not, like, a that lot part. of times I rely on the fact that if I, if we don't catch it, we can look over here and see it in oh, chat, and now yeah. the bot doesn't alert yeah. us in chat tonight. Yeah. It's kind of screwy. We're doing our best, guys. Sorry if we miss you. We're definitely not trying to uh, ignore anyone. All right? All right, so that's the general fade that we're looking for. Let's get this side here and the underside of the tank real quick, I guess. Right. Yeah, the underside needs to not be freaking gray. The underside, anytime I'm doing it, I generally don't pay a whole lot of attention other than to make it really dark because I'm going to come back in and weather a bunch of this with muds and uh, and other textures. Uh, we'll do 
uh, pastels, chalks, things like that on the underside as we go. Same with the tracks. I'm not going to worry about the tracks right now. Well, we probably ought to go ahead and prime them with the black, I guess. Because this will solve, this will handle a lot of our work for us later. We're going to fill mud back in on these, but if we do the mud over the gray, it makes it a little harder to paint. So it does make sense to go in and black these out. Hey, Danny Wine. Danny Wine, what's going on, brother friend? Happy New Korean Year. Hey, I think he said earlier, was it the rooster? Is that what he said? What is it the year of? I think he said rooster. Um... So Saldot is going to tattoo yours and Rob's faces on either butt cheek. <laughs> he said the awkward part is that Kenny's going to end up in the middle. Oh my gosh! Aloha, Monkey Kenny! Coming in hot with the Aloha. <laughs> that would be funny, Aloha. A Chaos Aloha Monkey would be pretty freaking tight, actually. So just real quick going in and getting this, nice, and then we'll do these panel outlines. Oh, we're out of black. Buy those paper towels at Winco? No. Where did our paper towels come from? Just Target? Probably. Cheapo? No, maybe the grocery store. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the grocery store. These last ones are really bad. <laughs> like, they're really bad. If you want to use them for anything actual, like, in the house other than the painting, you got to use, like, six. They're pretty bad. I buy the total non-absorbent, you know, rags. Basically. here make sure everywhere I can catch a detail where I'm cleaning up that light gray on the drivetrain I can the drivetrain sucks on these models anyway they're not detailed at all so it's not like the drive wheels or anything have got anything that you're gonna kill yourself about if you don't get it exactly right right it's not like doing a, a scale model like a scale model tank that has you know specifically historically accurate front drive wheel and offsets and all that stuff this is a rhino this game's workshop they pretend to know tanks they don't know what they're doing um, i have a question from Pentimus Prime. sure my space wolves only have yellow on their shoulder pads would i still be able to, to use this technique and still get a decent transition or would it be better to go dark to light on, on miniatures, like actual soldiers, I tend to not think that this doesn't really do you a whole lot of good, all right? Um, and the reason is that you just don't have enough open area to invest this kind of time and get anything back. Can you still pre-highlight? Sure. Generally on shoulder pads, it's a lot easier to just go in, just go in with a brown and work up to a yellow. You're going to be a lot happier that way. Um, this, in order to get a tight enough transition on the actual uh, shoulder pad itself, because it's so, it's so small... You got to get, I mean, a very, very fine uh, spray control out of your airbrush. If you can do that, great. And then you can come back in and glaze your yellows over it if you wanted to. Glaze browns and work up to yellows. That's a lot more work than just going with more opaque paints and blending right on the shoulder pad, in my opinion. Start with a number and work dark to light, just like you said. I think is your best bet. JP Great 87 Life Liz said, My cousin has Yosemite Sam on his butt cheek with his rifle pointed at his butthole saying, Come out of that hole, you silly rabbit. Oh my god, that's the best thing ever. I think I've heard tale of those of those tattoos, but I've never seen that tattoo ever. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm just trying to throw some paint up inside that windshield area there. Just to make sure it's dark enough. Okay. Uh, and let's get these. We know these insets are going to be black, so we're just going to go ahead and fill them with the primer right now. We're going to be doing a lot of brushwork on those anyway. But this brush is good enough at being exact that I can come in here and line these and not really sweat getting our whites completely screwed up.
<laughs> that was thank you for the advice and said I stared longingly into your eyes as you gave it so it really sunk in. <laughs> what? That's the, that's the way we do it here, right? It's the the awkward man stare is a very good transfer of information across the digital domain we are finding. <laughs> and, and we're thinking that maybe that tattoo was actually Elmer Fudd. Is Elmer Fudd? Oh, oh yeah. it would be Elmer it, Fudd, yeah. wouldn't it? But she said uh, that she hasn't. She's only heard of it. She's, she's not actually seen the tattoo. Can I say that's an awkward so, one to be like, "Hey, you want to check out my tattoo? Check this out." Is it? You can get you arrested in most counties. <laughs> Bearing butthole in public, I think, is a is a code four six two. Is what? Code four six two. Bearing butthole in public. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That went. You know, four six two on an undercover cop. <laughs> Alright, just get some black in there. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's alright, it's alright. Alright, now, here's the pot that becomes fun. What you want to do is, number one, I'm going to clean the tip real quick, make sure I'm not gummed up, because we're going to try to do, not super fine lines, but uh, you're going to want to be able to pull a fairly consistent line if you can. Um, because we've already done this white highlight, what the goal is now... Also wondering when we're uh, As soon as I get done painting this black, I said white, and then I... Yeah. Went ahead and shot it. <laughs> yeah. I want to get this done, guys. All right, so I want to pull a fine line right across all of these panels. Okay, highlighting or shading on both sides of all these panel lines. Got 11 more, so second wheel spin. Okay. You want it to be dark enough that it's picking up after we go in over this. But you don't want it to be so wide that you lose that highlight that you put on there all together. Alright, so again, just follow where the tank tells you to, right? It's got all these lines on here. Just go in and... But if it starts talking to you, you might want to put it down just for a while. Paint fumes might be getting... What? Go where it tells you to. <laughs> well, you know... You don't listen to the paint, what good is it? <laughs> the voices in my head are the ones that keep me honest. Outline all these little spots here. These grills. Stuff like that. These little pockets of whatever because anywhere where you can imagine like as this tank was in you know use <laughs> where would it get dirt and grime build up right so get grime all around all this crap here these definitely around the base of this trunk yeah I, I definitely am with you there Steve what's that that you look like the kids in Stranger Things I look the kid from Stranger Things. Like Except him. I had the teeth. I need those. Well, like yeah, I need to go to the costume shop and get those teeth. But you're him as an adult. He because still doesn't have that teeth. Why don't you donate five dollars to the cause though. and maybe it'll make you feel better? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much. George. He's got that disease where those teeth will never grow, right? <laughs> I think oh, I I saw, yeah, yeah I we saw him on like a talk show, and he's got yeah. some some thing where that's just a way it is. Like he doesn't have those teeth. His baby teeth never after he got knocked out. I don't think they came back. So you know. As an adult, he got tired of people asking why he didn't have teeth, so he Fronts. put fake teeth in. Yeah, got That's got a bridge. Who you are. Went ahead and got the bridge. <laughs> Started Stranger Things. Made a bank. Uh, got my bridge. I have a question for lived you. Lived a normal life. Shoot. Do you know why chicken coops have two doors? Oh, here we go. Uh, why? Because if they had four, they'd be chicken sedans. <laughs> Zeb? No. Uncle Touchy? Yep. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Don't make me come over there. 
<laughs> oh, no, I haven't done a wheel spin yet. I'm waiting for him to get to a good point to stop. Yeah, sorry, we're doing some <laughs> stuff here where I don't want to stop with a bunch of paint and airbrush. We will get to it momentarily. <laughs> Trace all these details out, anything where you want shadow. Down in here, this little panel line that is brought up here. So, the rest of that's okay. I'm not worried about that. We'll probably wash all the rest of this anyway. Or Why don't you blaze it back. To the cause and maybe it'll make you feel better. Thanks, DBD. DBD! How the hell are you, my friend? Let's get these front panels did that here. Do it? I think that did it. Is that? That was a very specific number. Yeah. It's not flipping over. Can't do it. Nope. <laughs> We're two cents off now. Oh, that guy, that bastard. He did that on purpose. You <laughs> bastard. I'm going to go ahead and pretend like those lines on the fenders that I didn't fill are actually parts of the model. <laughs> I'm going to do it right here on these as well. <laughs> like, man, stare. Oh, that stare. <laughs> Best reaction ever. Force said, oh dear. <laughs> Amazing. Angry man. There. <laughs> <laughs> I dumped it on him. <laughs> that was all touchy. Now says, maybe I won't move there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach you, whippersnappers. Why don't you donate five dollars to the cause and maybe Thanks, make Twitter. it feel better. That gets us there. <laughs> That sucks because you can't just donate two cents. No. I'd have done it anyway. <laughs> yep, he's Chuck around the <laughs> And up underneath all these panels. I'll walk through it all after I get it done just so we can blow through this and get to a wheel spin real quick. All right, but I want to get all of these areas kind of highlighted. <laughs> now what we're doing right now isn't anything about light. This is about weathering. All right? Remember I said that earlier? This isn't about <laughs> shade and light on the model. It's not about value for uh, anything other than the shade, the dirt, the grime that is you built play. up on a tank as it goes, right? Oh, these are good. A more uncle or bad uncle jokes? Oh, they're great dad jokes. We had a guy, right, who was, what, was he the husband of the real estate agent? Yeah. Okay, so the real estate agent for the sellers was at the house today while we were doing the inspection. And her husband was there as well. And so this guy was the king of bad dad jokes. Like, every time he opened his mouth, like, like we weren't talking about it. We'd be like... One of my own. We'd be like, you know, so, yeah, I mean, like, once I was doing this house and this thing happened, and he'd be like, so, you know. And he'd come with all these really bad, bad dad <laughs> jokes. That's the first one that he did. I can't even remember it But anymore. it was funny because I'm sitting there going, would this guy please shut up? And she's over there like, <laughs> talk bad. more! Talk more! She's so funny. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I, after I we left the house, I was I like, I was like, I, this, does this guy ever shut up? And she's like, I wish he'd talk more. <laughs> it's so great. It was just, I told her, we got to tell the stream about that because it's exactly like when we're streaming uh -huh. and you're all about the bad dad jokes. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, Ellie, have a good weekend. You out of here, Ellie? Yeah, she has to work. <laughs> Go ahead and darken these Jeff insides up now. wants to know why you hate dad. Why do you hate the dad? I was born <laughs> without a dad. I was just a test tube baby. I never knew what it was like to have a father. Don't bring it up. You guys are awfully hard. I hate you people. All right, I'm digging that. <laughs> One time an alligator bit off an elephant's trunk at a watering hole. 
right after the elephant yelled, It won't be long now! <laughs> That's irrelevant. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could be impervious to those, but I just don't think it's possible. I'm just not being able to find the way. The guidance, I don't have the proper guidance. They do make you happy. I love it. Right? I love it when they get me. I gotta admit, so don't ever stop trying. As much as I might bitch about bad dad jokes, don't ever stop, guys. I do it all in jest. Like, I laugh on the inside sometimes, but not much. So don't get any funny ideas, but... I loved it like last night where Zeb got me. Like it's like a game, right? It's like I'm trying to make sure I'm getting better at like reading ahead, you know, and not just going and being like, oh, so and, and that's so said. By the way, why I don't read them all because when I know she's even trying to catch me. One that gets him, it's totally worth it. She's trying to catch me. You guys know, I hope you know that I love them, and I know that there's a delay. But anytime I laugh, it's pretty much because I'm reading your comments and your dad jokes. Like bastages, what are you doing? But I have to read a few because otherwise I think he'll be more suspicious. Alright, does that look good? Do we got any panels we missed? Right there. <laughs> oh, that's doohickeys. so dad. I love that one. Okay. Alright, so we still got I a can, good transition I can hear the there. coming from the back seat. What's that? Dapper Steve said, I recently used this one. Car crosses train track. A train must have just crossed here, kids. And then when the kids say, how can you tell? I can see the tracks. <laughs> That's so good. That is can so bad. That is the one where your kids like, hate oh, you forever Dad. for saying stuff like that. Dad, I mean, like, let's silly. be honest. Right? <laughs> Some Saldock even agrees with me on that one. <laughs> Like, wait a minute. The eye rolls were intense. That was horrible. <laughs> like, literally horrible. <laughs> Gotta say it now, Boshek. You can't throw it out there like that and then not, not tell us. What do you do? Start one and then not no, finish it? No, he said, it? I know a good one my dad told me, but I'm not sure if I want to say it. Because uh -oh. it's bad. It's bad? Let's this black out real quick. There you go. See? That's a good gauge right there, Punchmas. What's that? I told my girlfriend a dad joke on our first date. When she laughed, instead of running away, I knew she was the one. There you go. Four years later, she's still putting up with us. There you go. Yes. That and queso. Did she like queso? We're gonna... <laughs> Stick with us. Somebody was asking last night if we gave answers to life questions, too. I think we just proved that. <laughs> you can tell a good dad joke and like queso. She's a keeper. Yes. He, she, he is a keeper. Yes. Yeah. We're not trying to say that that's only a well, one-way deal. Do your thing. That's, here, you want that? No, thanks. It's very wet. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> so good. Yuck. <laughs> oh. No, that's a good one, Bosex. You gotta hear this one. Okay, what? How do you make a hormone? <clears throat> Ow. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> See, the problem is my mind goes straight to hookers. Yeah, I'm not thinking about, like, testosterone and all that kind of stuff. So. All right, so there we go. So the idea here is we set up our fades. We've got deep black. We've got a mid. We've got up to bright white at the top. All right, so that'll help us as we're transitioning into our browns. And then we've gone back in and just darkened around all these doors. That, as we spray our first layer of golden brown on, you'll see how that comes to life. All right, and we'll get a very cool, like, deep in place of the, the burnt umber. But it'll already kind of have a blend built in because of the aerosol effect that we get on the model and the fact that we're going to cover it completely with another paint. Right, so more like how when we're glazing, these lines, you know, I don't care if they're a little sloppy, we got a little bit of splotchiness in it, it's no big deal. All that stuff's going to go away, and it's actually going to give it a very natural shading on the model. And it cuts out the steps of, like I said, having to start from a burnt umber up. And if you do that from a shade, you could base it in burnt umber, and then from your next uh, uh, highlight up or your next base color up, 
you have to be very specific on placement. So if your airbrush skills aren't on point, if you feel like you're not comfortable doing that, if you just want to go fast and get a great uh, effect, this is the way to do it. Okay. And so we'll pick up after we do a wheel spin and we'll show you how to put the color on it. And we are 17 minutes away from treasure. Oh God. Oh God. We got two wheel spins coming up. Two wheel spins. Oh gosh. I don't think I put a, uh, hmm. here. Let's see here. I think if we go, oh God, it would be really nice if I hit this button and it connected. It connected. Oh my God. One dollar donation received oh! from Twitter. Vince. Did you guys just hear that? I said, you know, it would be cool because I forgot to set up the window for the, the, the B team bot. The bot is for doing raffles. I said, no, it would be cool is if I hit this button and it turned. And as soon as I did it, I hit the button and the bot's back. Yay! The bot's back. Now we're getting all the alerts <laughs> that we missed. There we go. That's all right. I'm okay if it catches up because that way it'll add everybody's it'll add everybody's points correctly. So that's kind of cool. I promised everybody we would not have VIP on it though, so we're going to continue to go that route. I'm not going to bust up and do that. It's going to be uh, just like I said it was. Everybody's even tonight. I'm not going to break it back. All right. But we are going to be able to use the bot, oh, yeah. which is awesome. There you go. Porno Yay. magazine. Porno mag, check. Box, condom. Condoms, check. Harper. Harper. Dirty, dirty little thing. <laughs> oh, how awesome did I cut is freaking off? I cut off Homer. Yeah, you cut out party. I cut off Homer. You cut out party. All right, let's set this up to 10 minutes. That's awesome. And uh, go. There are no multipliers. I'm not doing anything for anybody special. <laughs> I will go ahead and add all the silver and golds in, right, like I normally would. But I'm not going to give any multipliers. Right. Oh, I'll let everybody in, but I'm not getting any multipliers. Everybody's even. It is the night of the common man. We said that from the get-go. You guys went in and went hard in the paint with the support, so we are not yes. going to go back on our choices. So there you go. We got 60 people in. Everybody's in. All you got to do so is follow the crowd. So many people contributed to this one. Exclamation These point two. spin. Everybody out there, like literally more contributors than we've ever had towards wheel spins, went in on this one hard for you guys. So make sure you type in exclamation point spin. Everybody's equal tonight. Everybody's on the same playing field. Everybody's got the exact same chance to win, so let's get some new people winning. We've got two winners coming out of this one, at least. If we get more wheel spins in the meantime, in we will pull more. Get in it. You could win one of two bombs. Oh, my God. Limited edition bomb snail dice bag with the embroidered you? invisible snail on it. <laughs> All right. And in yours, the meantime. Yours will be a green snail, not this cool invisible one that we have here. Uh, are you going to check the whip gallery? Oh, are we supposed to? I think so. Let me have one of those Britain. porno Thank you so much. Porno mag. Large box of condom. Condoms. Bottle of Old Harper. Old Harper. A couple of those panty shields. Panty shields. Some illegal fireworks. Fireworks. And one of those disposable enemas. Only one? Yes, no, make it two. All right, now it's party. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what you guys got cooking over here in the whip. It's not finished yet. Any pointers? I don't know your name. You got to put your name on it. I will answer the question. But Oh, it's Bilbo Swaggins. Fantastic. He put it back on there. All right, good. Uh, uh, hey, I'm going to kill that one. Yes, Twitch, thank you. Twitch, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome. Going crazy. Yeah, I know. Wow, they're all oh. catching up now. All right, uh, challenge accepted and accomplished. Oh, my God, he did it. He got Trader Joe's stars. Mystic oh, what, Scorpion. What? Almost done. Uh, right, Brutalator returning time. champion. Look at that. Look at the swagger. Look at the swagger. Eight billion times, you're still just a beginner. But keep it up. Yeah, Eventually, you might be able Somebody likes us. Welcome, Heath. Thank you so much for the follow. You do need to be a follower to win, so make sure oh, yeah. you click that follow button if you'd like to have a chance at a wheel spin. If I draw your name and it does not tell me you're a follower, I will draw somebody else immediately. Not to be mean, we just got to keep this train rolling. Right? I like this, man. I am not mad at this at all. You want some... Um, Bilbo, you want some, sure. some heads up on what you might want to do next? The one thing that I see is initially I'm not getting a lot of contrast due to value. I'm getting some contrast due to color. But we talk about here on the channel a lot uh, the, the differences between using contrasting colors and then also pulling value, meaning light versus dark. And right now on the skin, I see some good what looks to be uh, some good dry brush here across the scales. right? So you've got some really good work up there, but you need to go brighter. I would pull this up a little bit brighter. Even though it looks like you're trying to keep it in that kind of black scale range, there's no reason why not to go up either. I'm seeing some blue and some gray in here. Warrior Mike, thank you so much for the follow. I'm seeing some blue and gray in here. So if you go up to whatever this lighter color that you dry brushed with was and add a little bit. I like ivory. 
for colors like this. You can add a little touch of ivory to it and brighten it up. And then instead of dry brushing, Boset or Boset, welcome. Thank you for the follow. And just start doing edge highlighting, right? If you're not comfortable with edge highlighting, go back with a very light dry brush, but don't dry brush everything. Just dry brush the tops, right? Dry brush the top of the shoulder, not the underside. Dry brush the top of this forearm right here on the outside, not the inside and not the back, all right? On the head, dry brush just from the nose across the crest of the head a little bit, don't, and then maybe here across the top of the eye, but don't do anything underneath the chin, right? Leave these dark so that when you pop it up here, it gives it that transition of value, right? There's, you need both. You need a transition of color if you're putting color on the model. You don't want to, I mean, you can make it monotone. We talked about that a lot. You could paint uh, any model in just black and white. But if you don't have that light versus dark down across all the details of the model, it will look muddy. It tends to look very monochromatic and uninteresting. So what you want to do is pull light out of it, go, go brighter in certain areas, and keep darkness on other areas of the model so that it plays against itself. And you go brighter on those details that you want to pick out, darker in those details that don't really matter. The underside belly doesn't really matter unless the thing's upside down, right? But in a normal situation like this guy, you don't have to worry too much about the underneath, uh, the bottom of his chin, not so much, things like that. You've got really good color contrast with this fiery red on his neck and on top of his horns and obviously the dude on top. I think right now all you got to worry about is pulling the, all the colors you have up a little bit brighter so that it doesn't kind of uh, lose that contrast in and amongst all the black. Right. <coughs> so that's be where I start. After you do that and you get the black popping a little bit more, then we'll take another look at it and we'll see how the orange and reds look against that black when that bright uh, that black gets brighter. Um, another thing we talk about is work one part of the model up that's very dominant, work it up to about that almost complete stage, and then look at the model again and evaluate the rest of your colors and values on it and see if you need to take anything else brighter, shade anything else down in order to compare and contrast to it. So I would start there because the black is the dominant part of this and then see how those reds and oranges look. I feel like when you bring the black up, the reds and oranges are going to want to get brighter too, but I'm not ready to say that until we see some work. But good job, man. I like the color combo. It's a great model. Dave Led better use the link that the bomb snail just I whip. So click on that link and then click the upload. Alright, that was Philbo. I love this. I love this. Look at this. He put oh, yeah. look at what he did. He, he put, put two of them together the with chocolate in the middle and, and is drinking a hot chocolate with, with chocolate like crumbled up crumbled in it. On top. Is it too much? He can't talk to us because he's in a coma now. In a chocolate coma. In a coma. Chocolate Great. Coma. You did it to yourself. Um, I accept no responsibility in this equation. Okay, but I have to check some. What? You, um, I don't know. You anything. haven't finished painting the stacks on the. Oh, God. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> we'll do that with a brush then. Okay, That'll happen so later. Drago said that that's. Trader Joe's Star is made into cookie sandwiches with homemade chocolate whipped cream served with traditional hot chocolate, cooked stove top with melted chocolate, topped with chocolate whipped cream, crushed chocolate stars, and dark chocolate covered chocolate dip. Yes. Uncle Touchy, I'm not reading it. Chocolate lots. <laughs> Cydrin, it should be self evident. Was the perfect amount? Oh my god. Of gosh. course I'm wearing a Rob Boss chocolate. wig and a trucker hat. I am Breaker Breaker Rob Boss, checking in, hammered down. <laughs> What's your 20? Oh my God, JP Gray, that one's horrible, <laughs> horrible. Which one? Which one? I'm see how long it takes me to read chat now because I'm afraid everybody's catching me in bad dad jokes, so I'm like. Oh. Which one? Why don't you donate one five dollars to the cause and maybe it'll make you feel better. Studio seventy seven, are you freaking hey. kidding me, my friend? That's Fifty five awesome. bucks you. coming in, pushing us to at least one more, right? Yep, another wheel spin coming in. Studio seventy seven, the man. Thank you so much. That's three winners we will be pulling out. You got two and a half minutes. We got 120 entries. This is a special day because the bot was down. Everybody, this is ground floor wheel spin raffles. Everybody's on equal footing. Everybody's got the same chance to win tonight and tonight only. This is not a deal that will happen very often. So get it in. Type exclamation point spin. It costs you nothing but your time. Do it. You can win cool shit. Was it JP's uh, orange soda joke? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> You'll be fine. Like you it. just don't remind me about it. Donation received from Studio. Oh, I naked puzzle basement. I need somebody to collect them and put them all in like a, a, a document and email it to me. Perfect amount of chocolate. I'm glad you liked I never them. Never remember them. I'm glad you guys liked them though, because those stars are amazing, so aren't they? 
Those stars are amazing. Sidebound, the model is fantastic. As a matter of fact, what we might do during the stream, if you remind me, is break it out and show everybody. It's really top yeah, notch. Know. It's really top notch. Uh, Mystic Scorpion Whip, almost done. Oh, why am I clicking over there? I need to click over here. I'm digging this base. Oh, heck yeah, man. It's like a fire pit. All right. Assassin Red, thank you so much for the host. I like this, man. I'm liking it. Yeah, I'm digging it. I would uh, I would maybe go in and, you know, darken up. I'm sure you're doing it. I'm sure you're probably going to do it already, even if you wanted to just wash and knock this earth back a little bit and then dry brush it up a little bit better to give it some detail. This is an awesome little diorama base. I like this with the little uh, campground feel on it, the logs. That's freaking awesome. That's really awesome. And the spit, I dig it. Needs a pig. Needs a pig on the spit. I like that base. It tells a good story. All right. Uh, making sure we have, I Thank think, you. four oh wheel spins coming in, guys. So there will be now four winners. That You got 40 seconds. Get the hammer down. Click on that thing. Exclamation point spin. You got 40 oh, seconds to get in on it. Four winners coming out of this. 40 seconds. By the time you hear this, it's already too late. Type exclamation point spin. Please do it. Brutaliter. Oh, heck yeah, man. I love these aquarium tyrannies. You don't like Trader Joe's. Look at this. Look at this. I love the oranges. Man, I really love the oranges. This has been awesome watching these. Chocolate. Great color combo. I love the deep orange and the yellow highlights on it and the turquoise or light blues to the purples and everything. Great high bright contrast. And then again, like the, the aquarium foliage is really snapping. $4. I dig it. Donation received. Can I Great work. Nice for round number now. A cake of some sort. A meal. If you're talking to me, the answer is yes. If you're talking to somebody else, you. I don't know. They have to speak for themselves. Uncle Touchy <laughs> said he would write down his collection of dad jokes if he tried. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm just figuring out what kind of bribery we were talking about. Look at so these I do, eyes. I do bake a mean cookie. Look at these eyes, Uncle Touchy. Right here. We'll have no bad dad joke <laughs> lists. Right? What the hell is oh, this model? Oh, that's awesome, JP. I love that one. What the hell is this model? <laughs> this is freaking oh, awesome. I like this. <laughs> this is like crazy beast of the forest. These horns as trees and the roots coming off the dragon head. This is a freaking amazing model. I'm in love with this. This is be this is a completely awesome bust. That's going to be awesome. Keep us posted on this one. This is awesome. Awesome. One, two, three entrance in the raffle, and we are closed. Let's pick some one, two, three, four winners out of this one. What do you say? What do you say? My supplies here. No list. You found a whole book. I did see a whole book when I Googled bad dad jokes the other day. I'm not going to lie. There is a bad dad joke Why pun book. Why are you book. Googling bad dad jokes? Hey, because let's not get into to, the particulars. I don't ask them. you personal questions. You don't have to ask me. It's because you enjoy them. No, I think it secretly is. maybe. All right. All right, winner number one is... Nay 2000! Congratulations! Congratulations, Nay. We're going to pull all four winners, all right? And then at the end, we'll do all the wheel spins. Woo -woo. So hold tight. All right, winner number dose. Femus! Femus uh, is not going to do this. He has already said that he will pass him along. So oh. let's do uh, winner number dose again. Was that just you could automatically? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, 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 right, he's win? offline. Oh, okay. The gold's gotcha. due. But uh, his last one got, uh, got given back too. So. Okay. Ready? You go. Psycho Stevo! Congratulations, my friend. Got another two. Don't go nowhere. Is Psycho Stevo loco? Local? Is he loco? loco? I don't know if he's loco. Local? <laughs> I think yes. I think he wants to meet at Imperial Outpost. So yes, he might actually be here in the valley. We could actually go have like a beverage. And and hand deliver. And hand deliver thing. We get, we've done it before. We've done it before. Alright. Alright. Number we're Trace. Or I spy dry. Fitzy mod, Fitzy, Aww. congratulations, my friend. Congrats, people. See, look at what it happens. Look at this level level playing field. Lots of winners. All right, last but definitely not least. Fitzy mod, you did actually win. Mastermind, congratulations, Mastermind. Awesome stuff, gang. Thank you so much for all the support. Let's do these wheel spins. 
Good shite incoming. And then the uh, treasure. Yep, we got it. Don't, oh, yeah, don't forget. Treasure. We have a treasure trove treasure. raffle coming in again. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that one going now that we've done this. Yep. You've got these written down, right? So we're good? These written down. All right, let me reset this. Let's do the keyword raffle. The keyword treasure is going to be... Time. What can we... Uh, we're going to spin the wheel while this one's going, but what do we want this to be? And Harry What's the word? Potter and all his wizard friends went straight to hell for practicing witchcraft. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it could be yay. This Sweaty hat, hat, this hat and hair is like my new life. Sweaty hat. Sweaty hat and hair. I'm just gonna go out in public like this. Cylon coming in hot with a sub. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy those emotes. Hype it up for these guys, guys and gals. All the support, all the love on a Friday. Thank you so much. Headed into the weekend. Uh, what's the word? Somebody give me a word. Somebody give me a word. Golden loot hall. That's too many words. Sweaty hat. Schminkle. What? No, sweaty. Sweaty. Really Alright, it's just gonna be sweaty. <laughs> we try to make it hard just so it's fun and they <laughs> might you know we're, we might I might win, actually. <laughs> this is the treasure trove giveaway. Don't type it until I get it ready to oh, go. Bad dad would have been a good one. Ten minutes. Go! Harambe. <laughs> go! I do not add anybody in on this. This is definitely a level playing field. You gotta type it on your own. I don't make it easy on anybody. Go for it, go for it, go for it. These Seb Seven, thank you so much, my friend. Coming back into the fold for how many? Three months in a row? Holy crud. Richter scale, five months. Five freaking months, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sweaties, let's get all the sweaties in chat. Exclamation point, sweaty. This one will get you the treasure trove giveaway. The treasure trove giveaway is 10 army painter paints, 3 army painter brushes, 3 cool mini or not miniatures, 3 uh, micro art studio bases, all sent directly to you anywhere in the world, absolutely free to get you into the hobby. Great stuff from our sponsors on the channel and an amazing start to get you into some Wrath of Kings. Uh, these will be Wrath of Kings uh, Shale Han miniatures this week. So uh, congratulations ahead, but we got four wheel spins to do. While you guys enter all your sweaties, let's spin some wheel. Who's up first? Who gets the wink? Nay 2000. Nay 2000. I don't think you've won before, my friend. No. I don't know if you've been present for one of these momentous occasions. And you may not know, you may not be prepared for what happens for the first wheel spin each day, but I'm going to tell you right now. I want you to get in close to your monitor. Coriander! Thank you so much. Two months in a row. I want you to get in close. I want you to look me straight in the eyes, my friend. Very close. Very close. This one can only be one once. That is correct, Steve. Accept that. Awkward man wink. Me to you. Let's get this done. Spinning this wheel. Ready? Watch 9 o'clock right here by the arrow. Big bucks, big bucks. There are no whammies, but I still have to say no whammies. Yeah, no, it's just like no whammies. It's <laughs> that there's whammies. I don't even understand what this is. No, the bot's back. We everything. Pathfinders or Devilfish? Tau Pathfinder set, my friend. Congratulations. Nay 2000. You've never won, but you've always envied the awkward stare. It cannot be more awkward than first wheel spin of the day with the wink. Just saying. Just saying. All about you, baby. All right, you want yourself some dirty, dirty towel. Let's get a dirty in chat there. Uh, who's up next? Next is Psycho Stevo. Psycho Stevo, you know the drill. You still get the awkward man stare. There's no wink. With right? The tap. There's no wink, and it's very awkward today because this hat, the hat, the sweatband that I licked, <laughs> and this hair. Oh, yeah. It gets even Dude. better than this, guys. Just Surly hang in. Ninja. Surly Ninja, great name. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. All right. All right. Here we go. Wheel spin number two. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Fat Matt is on there, perhaps? Dice bag, perhaps? Uh, Fat Matt's gone. Celestine is coming. Tevilfish. Oh, dice bag! Dice bag! Oh. Dice bag! Stop! Rats! Faith Wolf, Wolf Priest. Oh, so close. so close. We almost had our first dice bag winner. I so want to give away this dice bag. Like, literally. Dirty, dirty. Literally, I want to give away this away dice bag. Me. Take them from me. You could give it away to me. Honey, that's not the same. I, not the same. She wants them all as makeup bags. We have to not let it happen. I really want the see-through ones. We have to not let it happen. <laughs> Congratulations, Wolf Priest. All right, who's third? Third is Fitzy Ball. Fitzy! Fitzy, I want you here Fitzy right up front. Said he, was right, he already said he was right up next to me. You into it? You right here, baby? 
right like this? <laughs> that hair and that hat. How you feeling right about now? Oh Just digging in? Just digging and getting a little sweaty? Feeling oh, a little hot? Boshek heard space puppies. A little hot in the britches? Yeah, Bo don't tell Boshek somebody Boshek. else just won his wolf priest. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Big bucks, big bucks. No whammies. Fat Matt gone. Yo, dogs, Windsor Newton, Inquisitor Grayfax on the wheel. Yes. All right, one of the new triumvirate uh, miniatures, Inquisitor Grayfax, is now yours. Is now yours. Congratulations, my friend. Who won them? Boshek, we're not telling you because we know you'll hunt down either them or the mailman or both. And we don't want to hunt to come bail you out again. I'm just, like I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Trucker Rob Boss right here, baby. What happened to DeepBot? Wi-Fi broke, but now it's back. It came back right as we needed to give stuff away, as if the sun were shining on our little corner of the internet. And what's going on, my friend? Bird, 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 bird is the word. Why are you telling me this? I, everybody knows that. Studio 77, yes, the Friday Treasure Trove giveaway can only be won one time per annum. So each 12 months, you can only win once. We give it away 52 times every Friday during the year, uh, but you can only win once. Why fire? He's in charge of the mail. What's that? <laughs> Why fire asked if we if we got his letter. No, my and friend, said, it has I, not come I in. No, I'm not sure. Has not come in. At least I don't think it did. So if only you could see what I or I could see what you were doing during the awkward stare. Whoa. Hey, hey that's uh, that's kind of neat. Let's talk offline. And if you, oh yes. Yeah, a ham sandwich walks into a. Oh my God! Oh, you nearly no, got me. You I nearly really got me. Do that one. You nearly got me, assassin. That was by who do that. Nearly got me with that one. That was good. All right. Last but not least, on the wheel, who is it? Mastermind. 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 How's the stare working for you? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a connection here. It's a little different than all the others. I don't know why. Let's go. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Tax squad. Tax Celestine is Celestine is gone. Are you kidding me? I tell you what, the wheel really loves the stuff we put on today. That's Grayfax and Celestine gone. Only the Admac character is left. Can we give him away today, too? Congratulations. 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 All right. That's it. You got three minutes left on the Treasure Trove giveaway. Three minutes. Get in on that raffle if you can. This is another one of those long breaks. Don't do that. It hurts. Stop. Well, he thinks they have greater... Greater problems. <laughs> Aneurysm. Aneurysm. It's the big one. It's the big one. It's been nice knowing you, gang. I can't take it anymore. Oh, God. No. Oh, God. It hurts. <laughs> Oh, so good. So good. Oh, my God. I need a drink. Love it. You bastards are working together, and that's not fair. I can protect myself from, like, one, maybe two of you at a time, but when the whole group is against me, it makes it very, very tough. I feel put upon. Exclamation point. Sweaty. I feel very put upon. Uh, that's Galzo Red. Scalzo Kenny, Red. Kenny literally deep bot came on as soon as we were about to do the raffles. And I said, you know what would be nice is if I hit this button and I hit the button and it came online. Like literally couldn't have asked for a better situation. If only a way it would have been better is if I would have put it on screen right before I hit the button. And everybody else could have been like, oh. <laughs> it was like sung through the clouds and the parting of big bodies of water and good stuff. And those of you who just won, I am typing in exclamation point winner and the bomb snail is going to give you a link or an email address and just your oh the holy and water one has been used yourself. already i am i am not i'm not impressed with the holy water con but you guys got yes. me you bastages you even yes. were, you were even tricky about it no oh, i'm tricky about these because that's the only way i can get you she's crafty oh god <laughs> 
Damn you people. <laughs> Kenny. B-R-B-A-F-K. Don't be mad, baby. I still love you. I still love you. Pontimus. Pontimus. I would almost give you a point for that one, my friend. I would almost give you a point for that one. You issued the challenge, do you think you wouldn't take you up on Oh, come on, darkness. But not ganging up on me. Keep it even. I'm an old man. I can only handle a couple of things at a time, for crying out loud. Assassin, assassin because I didn't expect so you to jump on the train and go after me. It. So I was literally trusting. And that, see where that got me? See where that got me? Oh, now he's going to have trust issues. 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Exclamation point sweaty in chat. We got 101 entries. Everybody's even on this Friday giveaway. 36 seconds. Exclamation point yeah, sweaty. Yeah, You've seen yeah. how to enter it like that. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Sweaties. <laughs> Get them sweaties. 200 people in here. Happy are, are wanting some stuff. Swatty. Ridden is like swatty. It's sweaty. There you go, baby. Oh. Exclamation point sweaty. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yeah. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. The yeah, numbers yeah. are climbing. Yeah. They're climbing. Five seconds. I think I got to jump off early game. My cat was just sick on the carpet. I don't think it's... He's rocking. He's not laying down, but he's basically in a fetal position right now, rocking back and forth. <laughs> I'm not going to look at them again. I'm going to do the rest of the stream. You can stare at the back of this luscious hairdo. <laughs> so good. You do not deserve <laughs> so good. my love. Oh, they're coming in like crazy now. You can't read anything. <laughs> Which means I'm going to have to start reading them all. What do you call a cow with no legs? <laughs> We've got a raffle Ground giveaway beef. to do. Somebody we out there. We've heard the Kleenex one before. It's still good, though. How do you make the Kleenex dance? You put a little boogie in it. That's a good, not only a good dad joke, but a good kid joke. That is very popular amongst kids. Two peanuts were walking down the street. One was assaulted. <laughs> He's uh, probably not going to talk to me until at least Sunday. Why, well, Turk? My salt levels are equivalent to the Dead Sea. Close. Close. And all of you should be ashamed for getting me there. You freaking people. Every single one of you has Googled the exact same <laughs> stupid pun like website. And and you're all just trying to go in order here to see who can bust my balls the best. And you're you're winning here. You're winning. You're winning. I, I swear, it's hard to admit that you got me on that one. Alright, so this is for our Treasure Trove Friday giveaway. Again, just to describe to you um uh what we do on Treasure Trove Friday. I don't have the miniatures out for this one. I forgot to bust out the miniatures. But basically basically you get a uh, a full set of starter paints. <laughs> All right, from the army painter. Okay, so we get starter paints. Um, we get three brushes, which will include a dry brush and a standard brush and a fine detail brush. All of them very, very nice sable brushes. Well, the dry the dry brush is not a sable. Um, and then multiple micro art studio bases that can go with multiple game systems, but give you a good shot at these resin bases. They're fantastic. Along with, in this case, three miniatures from the Shale Han faction for Wrath of Kings. <laughs> So good stuff. Get you into some new miniature games that you might not be familiar with or add to an army that you might already have. I love it, Drago. All right? Drago, so Drago tells her dad the good dad jokes. And then, and he, then he tells her mom. Awesome. JS Twitch said that um, in, in the tutorial you do in February, he'll just read dad jokes. <laughs> I will, you, will be, you will be in a tutorial with cardboard, Jason. <laughs> right cardboard jason i'll put him on like a little motorized armature so every now and then cardboard jason goes <laughs> oh my god you people my entire screen is filled up with red sticky notes about really That's bad so freaking jokes all right let's pick a winner here give me a drum roll so i can get that flock out of dodge <laughs> guys are killing me treasure trove john bingham Congratulations, my friend. Oh, you can't win again? You did win one already, didn't you? Whoop! John Bingham. John Bingham won the treasure already? He did. Oh. 
Oh. All right. So you can't win but once a year. Like, Congrats anyway, John. That was good. Yeah, Somehow you got good. to convince the bot that it liked you better than everybody else. All right. So the real winner is... Backwater, Backwater terrain. terrain! Congratulations, my friend. John Bingham tried to steal it out from under you. But not happening. Not happening. <laughs> JS Twitch, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I like the double entendre one. I'm not going to read it because I'm not going to fall for that, but I do like that one. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> Clown one, not up to snuff. Not not up to snuff. The muffler one we already had. You guys, come on now. <laughs> We've had that a few times tonight, actually. <laughs> yeah, JP Gray, that's the like best one I've heard, sure. actually. Like, yeah, I asked for a dad for my best dad joke, and he just looked square in the eyes and goes, you. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that was pretty that's good. That's good. Who was that? That was JP Gray. That's good, dude. I like that one. <laughs> oh, my Wait, God. Okay, Raven, now, I Darkness. I you were going to stay up and watch tonight. Darkness, that's a good joke, actually, right? What's the difference between a golfer and a skydiver? A golfer goes, whack, shit. And a skydiver goes, shit, whack. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, actually. Raven, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was at. What? I'm not doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Not, not falling for that one. <laughs> not. Fa you guys are making me literally read everything, like letter by letter. Could that be? What is that? I think I'm not. Okay, no, I'm not reading. I'm just not gonna pay attention to chat anymore. You guys are dead to me. You guys are dead to me now. Dead yeah, to me now. I get to read them all. Dead to me now. Uh, does everybody know about the winner? Did everybody say that? Everybody. Everybody. Backwater terrain. Exclamation point winner. Send All me right. everybody who has Good won night. something tonight. Uh, make sure that you send your real name, your Twitch name, so we can identify you as a winner, and your mailing address to that email address, winner at slowfusegaming.com, uh, and we will get all your prize support out to you. It's probably all going to go out on Monday. Twinner, thank you so much. We will see you Sunday, my friend. We will paint tanks together. It will be grand. It will be grand. There you go, backwater terrain. Fantastic. And good night, Raven. Have a I told you I'm not winning. I'm not reading chat, McLeod. I'm not doing it. You people, you're killing me. They don't understand dad jokes in the. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, I'm just gonna click the X's. They all go away if I click the X's. It saves me. All right, let's Instead paint this thing. Instead of a tank. standing desk. With... All right. Oh, is this a lay down? Damn desk? you, people. Oh yes, I would. Definitely use this. Oh my gosh, look at this. Am I gonna? Was it? It's a like a it, it's like a dentist chair. Your desk attached to it, and you can lay back in it. I would love wow, that. Wow, I want that. That's awesome. <laughs> I want that. Actually, I think I'm gonna go straight to yellow ochre and say, through it. I'm not gonna use any of the darker right. stuff. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I think we're going to do it. If at first you don't succeed, skydiving probably isn't for you. Skydiving <laughs> probably. Now we're going to do golden brown. I can't, uh, don't forget, I can't break forgot, my habits. You forgot a couple things on there. What'd I do? On the tank, you didn't paint a couple stacks or something. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah, I need to. Damn it. I already cleaned the brush. I already cleaned the brush. Thanks for catching that, though, guys. I don't want to do those by hand. I was thinking I'd just get away with doing them by hand. I missed these two. Stacks. You guys are on the ball. You guys is on the ball. Go check people. Have a good night, Jack. Off to a blood bowl tourney in the morning. Hey, have fun with that. Have fun. Good luck. Want to try to get paint down inside them as well as around the outside while I've got the, the airbrush running. Might as well paint. Oh wow, Brutalis said if I were to donate the three little pig band to the stream so you can paint them on stream and give them away, would that be a possibility? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the only problem is that I can't paint them for quite a while. While I lo I love that sentiment and I'm more than happy to do it. If you want to donate the three pigs, we can paint them on stream. I cannot guarantee you that that will happen very fast. I have too many commissions in front and a lot of stuff going on. But as long as you're willing to wait, then yes, I would love to do that. 
But that's up to you. Completely up to you. You have to lay down desks to be able to touch the paint. What's that? So just for regular stuff. It'd be tough to paint on the laying down desk. The dentist chair desk. Yeah? I have a hard time painting it. Yeah. Yeah. If it was all the way flat? Yeah. Like painting up above <laughs> my head? It would work for a minute until I spilled the paint on myself, yeah. and then I would really hate that whole fucking thing. <laughs> right, whose idea was this? Night afflicted one. Have a afflicted. Great Take it easy, my friend. Thank you for joining us on a Friday. Probably stayed up late. <laughs> All right, perfect. What's the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? What's that? About five thousand miles. Oh my God. You asked. I did ask, but you no, you asked. That you caused me to what, ask. Though? <laughs> That's not fair, is it? Maybe so. Maybe it actually is. Kind of... All right, we're gonna call that enough. <laughs> How can you tell if an ant is a boy or a girl? They're all girls, otherwise they'd be uncle. You guys hear something? That's a really good one. I like that one. Did you guys hear something? <laughs> I'm having a hard time. It seems like maybe my left ear isn't working near as badly as it was yesterday either. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter chips. I think we had that one before. What's that? I still like it. Oshek has tried to order helicopter chips at every restaurant, but he always gets told that, that they only serve plain. It's good. It's like, you I people, like it. you're the problem with the world. <laughs> people. Fitzy Bond, did you get it? It's. I'm just. I'll just type it in. Exclamation point winner. Yep. It's right there. Send us an email to winner at slowfusegaming.com. All right, we're going to go in with golden brown. All right, that is our base for yellow. Uh, it is two layers up from our normal base for yellow. Normally, we would go in with burnt umber, right? Burnt umber. Know. And then we would work a 50-50 of burnt umber and golden brown together and then go to golden brown. So we're skipping two layers because of this white and black okay. workup that we did. So it saves you if we weren't having to deal with all these bad dad jokes. It would have saved <laughs> me a lot of time. Well, Assassin's Creed you've done no more than Whatever. I believe you sounds never. Like dad. You never. Yeah, that sounds like exactly <laughs> something my dad would say right before he busted out with another one. Got me resting on my laurels. Got me all comfortable <laughs> in the fact that none of it was going to happen again. And then, bam! Right to kiss her with another bad one. So I don't trust you as far as I could kick you. And Portalis said, hell yeah, man, I want to see that skill on some gangster piggies. Gangster piggies? All right, we can do that. Uh, and Backwater, I don't... I don't... You might wait for a while, because I don't know that he's going to El Paso anytime soon. What's that? Um, backwater Terrain said, I'm, I'm down in El Paso. I can wait until your next trip down if you want to save the shipping. Oh, no, man. Don't don't even sweat it. That's part of what we do here. We ship it to your door anywhere in the world. We ship stuff to all four corners of the planet for that. So don't feel bad about that at all. We appreciate the sentiment again. But no, we want to get it to you fast, easy. Thank you so much for taking part in the stream. It's our way of giving back. Thank you so much to all of our channel partners. MicroArt Studios, the Armor pa Army Painter, and all of you, guys. and all of you guys for sure. Oh, show cool men you're not making it available for you guys to get into some new part of the hobby that you might not have been able to touch yet. We love our partners. We love you guys. You doing a tutorial with Gabe? Yes, Gabe and I are sculpting tomorrow. The, he, the logistics, he doesn't know how to talk. Gabe, Skype. Did you not get my email? I asked for your Skype handle, so email me your Skype handle. Or if you don't have one, we can do Google Hangouts as well, <clears throat> if that works better for you. My fire is looking for a general purpose airbrush, but I have a Grex and it's boss, but I want a truthful action one. Oh, um, how much money do you want to spend? That's always a question, right? That's a good question. What's the Eclipse like? is great. The Iwata Eclipse is great. Um... The uh, the harder and Steambeck, if you want to spend a lot, but I mean you're gonna spend you know 250, 300 bucks for one that would be great. Well, I mean all of them are great. I just don't, I gotta answer that question. I would say like an Eclipse is probably your best bet. Great brush. All right, very very thin on this paint. I put about maybe 60 to 70 percent uh, flow improver. Versus paint, right? So I really loaded it up. We want this to be super thin. We're just going to work lots and lots of layers on it. <clears throat> it cap out at 150. 150? Yeah, Eclipse. Right? Grex also makes great dual actions that aren't pistol grip. Some people are saying 
Patriot. Patriot is good. Yep. Badger. The 105 is good. You want complete coverage on this. We're not skimping, right? We're just going to go over everything here. Covering up all the white, all the black. <clears throat> Bella out barking again. I think she is. What's going on out there? Maybe something. Something's going down next door. Yeah, they're probably having a party. <clears throat> there was a girl there. Maybe next door. You're not supposed to have girls there. <laughs> Right, you can tell how thin I'm going on. It's very much like, uh, more like glaze kind of thickness, right? We're just going to build up layer by layer. Um, White Hair said, should I stick with Grex since I'm already familiar with the system and the contestant? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. I run all sorts, so you don't have to. I mean, it just it's a matter of budget. I mean, a Grex is going to be, you can get Grexes in that 150 range, too. Um, the, uh, the cool thing with the Grex is that a lot of times the nozzles will interchange between the TG and the, whatever it's called, the GP series. So, or the GFs, whatever they're called, the, the standard dual action. So you might be able to save a little bit there in the long run if you were going to, like, say, size down to a 2.0 needle, you could swap it out between. So, yeah, I think I would suggest doing that. I, that'll be a little bit more efficient for you in the long run. I just switch switch asked if you could use acrylic inks where you're using right now. Um, you definitely could, but because we're going to be going to paint on our yellow and we already have a workup for our dudes, right, all of our Marines, I am not going to change that now. Had I chosen to do that early on, then there's no reason why you couldn't. Inks layer up just as well. We paint a lot with inks on the channel here through Airbrush, so we could have shown you that. But for vehicles, since we, like I said, since we already have kind of a workup mentality done for everything in this Army, we're just going to continue to use that color scheme. And it goes through this process of golden brown up to yellows, right? We've already been doing um, like uh, some of our admec contingent that goes with it. You can see that golden brown up underneath in our shading here, right? So this guy, we've just done that and some early chipping on. You can see the chipping. We use chipping solution all over this guy. Right? We're going to paint the chips on this tank rather than using the chipping solution. Oh, did you look at Bilbo Dragon's? Dragon on yes. We did. Were you not here? I really, really loved it. Um, the thing that I was saying is that I want to see more contrast pulled out in value on it. And by value, meaning light and dark, right? We talked a little bit about how on the black skin, I think that what you need to do, it looked like you had dry brushed maybe a black blue on the, on the skin there, right? Which looked really good. But I think what I would like to see is an even brighter black, blue, gray, or whatever that next highlight color would be brought up out of there. If that makes sense. And just go over, like, the top areas, you know, the uh, basically, like, um, uh, the top of the nose going down from the top of the nose and then across the crest of the head. Um, and then maybe right over the top of the eyes, but nothing down on the cheeks, nothing underneath the, the chin, uh, the top of the shoulders. The top of the forearm but in a narrow band and start highlighting up with a brighter color in those in those spot areas and see how you like the black because right now the black kind of pulls it the whole model down because it doesn't have enough transition between light and dark so i would work on bringing those blacks up a little lighter um not too bright right but a little bit lighter and then take a look at the model again and see and see if you're happy with how that starts to separate it from the reds and the oranges and then i think what's going to happen is that the reds and the oranges are going to have to come up too but i think that that that's where i would start start pulling that black that black work up. It looks great though, man. It's a great model. Uh, I don't know if I... I don't know. <sighs> um, let's see, man. You used a dry brush, right? And I think all you really got to do is now stop dry brushing the whole model and start dry brushing just specific parts is what I was saying. Um, 
you know, you don't have to do a technique that you're not comfortable with. Literally, just take um, take your dry brush that you were already working with on those lighter colors, mix up another light color above where you are on your blacks right now, and dry brush it the same way, but stop dry brushing all of the black because you were dry brushing like every surface of the black with each of your colors, and that starts to it loses its focus past about your mid-tone. What you want to do as you go brighter is start dry brushing fewer areas, right? Just start looking at it and say, just the top of the head dry brush. Don't dry brush the sides of the head. Just the top of the shoulder and don't dry brush the bottom side. Things like that, right? You can think about it like if the light's above him, it's only going to hit the high stuff, the top parts of each body part. So just start dry brushing lightly on those and pull back and take a look at it, right? That would be my suggestion. And I think you've definitely got the ability to do that because it's already looking good with the dry brushing you're doing. So I know you can do it. I know you can. I have faith in you, brother. Quiet Turk. Have a good night. Have a Quiet, you out of here. At your event, Bit Swap and Beers event. A what? Tomorrow. A Bit Swap and Beers event. Hell yeah. That sounds like living right there. Saldak. Saldak out of here too? Yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We will catch you on the flip side. Uncle Touchy, you know he's not going to read that because he's going to think it's a gotcha. I just don't read Uncle Touchy stuff at all. Anyway. <laughs> he said after I I moved there, I'll need a job. Got any advice for wanting to start doing something entirely new? Uh, I think that's a bad joke. I'm sure we can sit down and, and <laughs> talk about it, man. I'm sure we can figure out some way to help you. I know but lots of people here, believe it or not. That. So depending on what you wanted to do, yeah, we might even be able to get you something. I mean, you got to realize like Battle Foam is here. You know that. You went to Battle Foam. I know the guys over there. Rick Massey used to work for me. The Games Workshop. He runs sales over there. Large box of condoms. Large box of condoms. Check. Harper. Harper. Couple of those panty shields. Panty shields. Some illegal fireworks. And Forever. one of those disposable enemas. Only one? Uh, no. Okay. Now it's a party. Uh oh. You're in trouble now. What? I had plans on getting Devastator Squad together tonight, even putting on the gloves ready for gluing, but your stream sidetracked me, darn you. Hey, I blame Jen. Hashtag everybody in chat. Hashtag no, blame I'm Jen. I'm just sitting here reading the dad joke. Hashtag blame I'm Jen. Laughing. Hashtag blame Here's Jen. Painting. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's let's <laughs> bomb painting. Twitter with I'm hashtag blame Jen, anything. friends. Huh? Nope, nobody's doing that. I think everybody needs to. No, I don't think they will. Can you guys side with me for just once? Hey, rocket chicken. Please. Can you side with me just once? <laughs> So that I feel like maybe I'm important, maybe just once. You got one. Blame men. There you go. What? <laughs> what the hell? How did this be a, a man bashing stream? Hey. Right. Again, just very light. Hey, Notice how I'm covering hey, everything, right? I'm going over all the black. What? Are they doing it? My plea for assistance has worked. Hell yeah. Tweet it out. Let the world know. Let the world know. Hashtag it's still a pound sign. Yeah, Viking tea bag, you bastard. <laughs> the people need to know. The people can't be allowed to I just... I thought you guys liked me. I thought you were my friend. <laughs> March for Jen. Thank you, Uncle Touchy. <laughs> oh, man. What? <laughs> Ask for help. Denied. <laughs> Request for assistance. Denied. <laughs> He's like, Jen's been there longer. She can help me find a job easier oh, than you. Oh, darkness. That it was autocorrect. And that it was really supposed to be blame Jen, not blame men. Wow. Freaking autocorrect's even in on the deal. Hashtag oh, no. can't trust anybody. Autocorrect is on my side. No, autocorrect is against men. Well, autocorrect oh. is on my side. Well, damn you, woman. <laughs> This is going downhill fast. <laughs> oh, we had a chance. Just going spot to spot here. I'm trying not to get too much overspray on other stuff, but right now we're not super <laughs> concerned with it. Matt just said I, that I thought they were my friends, but they're presenting me with alternative facts. Alternative facts, yes. Hashtag alternate facts. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, what is the dragon bus that was in the gallery? Yeah, that thing is awesome, isn't it? I, I asked and nobody told us like what it was. I want to know. Did they not put their name on it? Uh, I think their name was on it, right? But I don't think oh. they mentioned what it was called. 
That's what we want to know. Like, what the heck is that thing? Because it's bitching. Evan Warps would like to know uh, if you have any suggestions for a good starter airbrush. 85 bucks or under? 85 bucks or under? Yeah. Can you splurge 15 more and buy an Iwata Neo? <laughs> I, I highly recommend this. It's I've been using it on quite a bit of stuff lately, and I'm I'm thoroughly blown away by it. It's literally a great airbrush. Um, it doesn't it doesn't have really any faults to it at all. It's easy to clean. It performs well under lots of heavy use. We've been using it on the stream tons and tons and tons. But you are going to spend about 104 dollars. So that's the cheapest I've been able to find them. I just bought a second one to give you an idea how I am, am happy with it. Right. So even more using it more than my Grex lately, and that's saying a lot. I know that frustrates the hell out of Kenny. Hashtag use the best brush you can afford. I'm cheap bastard. <laughs> That's what had to drop out of his card stuff on communism. I'll do. Do you realize how important it is for me to be able to focus on the things I do? And you people are lousy <laughs> and trying to take me off of my, my game here. Oh, there you go. That's it. Did, they, did they sell that at Hobby Lobby? What's that? The airbrush that you just recommended? Or, um, I think you know. might be able to get it at Hobby Lobby with a 40 off discount, but I still think that puts it at about the same price. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that I looked, oh, and it was like 150 bucks at Hobby Lobby or something like that, and so 104 was still about as good as you could get it. But check it. I don't don't take my word for it. I don't always look at all. I'm not the best shopper all the time. I try to be, right? I'm trying to look out for you guys and get you the deals, but I'm not always successful with it. So. What color are you using right now? Because um, Pentina said that's the exact color you want. Yellow. On golden brown. It is uh, model air golden brown, and this is my base for all the yellows on this. Now, it, the yellow is probably going to look a little bit different until we go through and do some glazes and washes on it because I didn't use the burnt umber. That's fair, I guess. But I'm using this as a way to show you guys uh, marking up a tank like this. So we're, we're stretching our own rules a little bit here for our, our force. But this golden brown is bitching. And we're running super duper thin. You can see I'm barely even covering right all of our... Uh, let me see if I can get this to go down a little bit here. Brighter. There we go. All right, you're seeing how... Look at how that shading is working. Right? So it's making it really, really dirty in all the recesses. And this is just the first pass of a very, very thin coat of paint. We're going to keep uh, knocking this paint on there. And we'll keep fading in that black that we did on these panels. All right? So it'll keep retreating. And it'll go as far as we need it, too. We just keep adding in golden brown. And then when we hit it with the yellow over this to brighten the yellow, we can continue to knock these shadows back. So that it just looks like, you know, super dirty panel lines and you notice how like our airbrushing didn't have to be super consistent or super um, uh, detailed on that level with the black right because this starts to really blend it all in okay see we're getting very dirty tank very quickly and technically if you wanted to like say if you were painting dark angels you could go over this black with like your green right off the bat and really almost be done Right? If you chose to do it that way. If you just wanted to get tanks done quick, go in, prime gray, highlight white, panel line in black with the airbrush, and then hit it with your base coat that you want. Layer it up a couple of times. Like if you wanted this desert yellow kind of color that we're getting right now to be the color of your tank, hit it a couple times with this, and then line highlight that bitch and put it on the table. Man, you could put decals on it. You know, you could do a couple of your detail things like, you know, paint your icons and specific things, emblems that you wanted on there, paint the gun you know, and the details on it, but you can see how a tank can be done really, really fast by following these rules. And this is just an old-scale modeling trick. Light and Passion said the dragon bust is the forest dragon from I Has Toys. So good! Sculpted by Paul Tan, only 20 past. So good. Such a good-looking sculpt. Coming skull. Darkness found it on, on Etsy. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can post the link. Yeah, post the link. Such a good sculpt. Like, I love those horns. It just has a very good story that it's telling, you know? It's a great looking model. Paint.
put quite a bit of paint in here because you will use quite a bit, but you're going to thin the absolute crap out of it, right? So just to give you an idea of how I'm thinning it, that's about filling the nozzle up to the bottom of the cup, right? So that's about six drops of paint in there, right? See how it's just right up to the bottom of the cup? And then you're going to flood it with flow improver. By Ooh. flood it, I mean flood it. I mean like that, right? That is... See? Like literally twice as much flow improver as you have like 60% flow improver, 30% paint, right? You're really flooding it and getting it as thin as humanly possible in there. You want to go past the milk consistency and straight to like almost glaze consistency the power of the airbrush really becomes evident as you thin your paints down to almost ridiculous levels because the ability to dry it as it hits the model by controlling your your trigger finger right will allow you to layer like nobody's business and that's really the key right if i had it actually this exiting the nozzle cool. what's that this is dry. it's so cool isn't it Now I'll start hitting it again with a second coat through these areas, and that'll make the the golden brown more and more opaque Ooh, as I do it. There. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, on, did you did you mean to put your hashtag blame Jen in the middle of that link? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> We made the link for sure not work, and that's not my fault. <laughs> Steph for Steve thinks airbrushing is cheating. What's that? Steph for Steve thinks airbrushing is cheating. I think you're cheating. <laughs> Right, but notice how I put that second and third layer and kept layering up on the door and look at how nice that's wow. starting to look. Right? Good. We're starting to sink that black into very, very deep shade. Right? I can go back and, and pinpoint where I want to layer up, like right in there on that triangle, right? To lighten up that highlight or lighten up the, the paint, but drive the blackness down by layering up this brown. Because if I keep doing the golden brown, eventually it becomes opaque and we could hide all the black. Right? So if you got a little dark on the black in a position, let's say let's pick one. Um where are we maybe a little dark? Uh, how about like up here, right? See how dark that is? If we say, okay, that's too dark, then what we can do is just come in here, right? Layer this up, right? And then focus on that line, right? And immediately knock it back to where it's just a really, really nice transition. Use air only, dry that paint real quick, right? And then hit it again, right? Air only, hit it again. And see, see how far we can drop that down and look how nice and dirty that blend is. Almost like we use the ochre in there, right? Which is the effect we're going for. We want that deep shade anywhere where we have those dirty panel lines, right? I mean, look at it. It's, it's literally the magic way to paint tanks, guys. It gets it done super quick. So if you got to bang it out, you know, and it's really just your matter or your diligence with highlighting the way you want, right? And then work and thin. With me thinks the yellow army is really coming together now. He's a lucky man, that guy. <laughs> Best army he's never paid for. <laughs> it's like here where I outlined all of the window, I can go heavier with the gold on the top side of this window flap. So I can sink the shadows up top down, which I don't really need, right? Oh, I'm getting a little wet right there, a little too built up. I need to be drying as I go. I didn't, so that's going to give me a little bit of skinning right there, which is going to suck. I'll have to do some weathering right there. Got a little bit of pilling on my paint. I'm running too thin, and I let it build up too much. I'll see if I can hide it. All right, but I'll just build up right layers and layers and layers up on top of that and then don't touch the bottom right and notice how immediately i get a really cool look across there even though i drew an entire black rectangle around those windows just by going heavy on the top light on the bottom i still get my color laid in i'm tinting the entire panel 
here, right? So nothing looks like it got missed, but the shade falls much heavier on the bottom of those windows where it should, right? So instantaneous, awesome. I've received probably like 15 miles. Far. What's that? Yeah, it's not far than any places from Aotuki. They're both Phoenix. I mean, Aotuki is technically Phoenix. And yeah. And Phoenix as well. I don't know the area enough to be able but to answer that I mean, question. so Aotuki is like the other side of I-10 from my office. And my office is only about 15 miles. So I'm definitely... Oh, okay. I always miles. consider Aotuki just by name to be one of these that's kind of further out this way. But it's in... By where that mall is. But Aotuki. Like, that's the, the, the uh, outlet mall we went to. Right? Was oh, not? Oh, I thought it was. Um, but like the IKEA that we were at today. Uh huh. So on the other side of I-10. Uh huh. From that. That's all it took. Oh okay. It's just a little area. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. It just sounds like it would be like a you know a country suburb or something. Yeah. No. So now I'm just re rinsing and repeating. Take the tank, section it in your head, right, and go to each area and and layer up your your color enough to brighten up the areas that need to be brightened. Remember, you're still going to go over this, or we're still going to go over this with yellow in our case. We're going to do another color. So we don't got to get totally crazy with this, but I'm just showing you how you can sink a lot of that shadow back. Netwolf! Welcome back, my friend. Five months. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. Good friend of the channel right there, Netwolf. Been around since forever. Oh, nice. Sapper, see if you keep us posted. Very cool, Sapper. Yeah, you have to hit us up. Go we'll grab some drinks and food. Yeah. If you want to meet us in real life, if you're scared of us, then don't feel obliged. <laughs> don't have to. We understand. Not everybody. We're not everybody's cup of tea, but, you know. Again, work to make sure you're bringing both sides up evenly. I, I've been bad. I've been just kind of dodging around in normal situations. I would paint us one side and then the other side so that I'm focused on getting my uh, my uh, brightness on this color the same on both. Now I'm not really in the mindset of how I did the other side, so I have to flip it around and look after I get a good layer on here. But <laughs> Make sure I'm angling down into these crevices here so I get the yellow paint inside and still keep the black. Right? Do the same thing, flip the model upside down, get the top side too. Saves you a lot of hassle in the end. Makes it to where hopefully I can just come in here with a black wash, you know, and finish out those inside of that sooty smokestack area. Again, you want to go light. You're not trying to cover everything in one go, right? You'll do, like, really, really wet application and be angry at yourself, just like I did right there. I'm try to dry that back. It's going to give me a texture on it, so I'm going to layer it up a little bit. I'm getting a lot of good places to do weathering because I'm running loose and not thinking. You hear about the cross-eyed teacher who lost her job because she couldn't control her Sorry, I, I totally can't hear you. <laughs> Should know better by now. Uncle Fetchy uh, went out with a girl one time and she said that she recognized him from the vegetarian club, but he'd never met her before. <laughs> Didn't we just see that one the other day when I was reading you that list? That might have been on that list on Facebook that I sat and read on the couch because that sounds familiar. <laughs> see, did you guys hear that? He read an entire list of dad jokes out loud to me. I actually laughed at a couple of them, too. He enjoys them. No, don't so tell this. Don't them. lie. Don't lie. I tolerated that list because I wanted to I wanted to get in her good graces. You know, she's mad at me for something. <laughs> that was just because it was, like, Wednesday, and I don't be mad at you on Wednesday. I have to be mad on Wednesday. It's, on the, it's actually on marked Wednesday. on the calendar. I dread Wednesdays. <laughs> Bad day. It's been red. I dread Very Wednesdays. Angry. Wednesdays is be mad at Jason Day for whatever <laughs> reason. I don't even know. Continuing to work. 
Got to get our base code on everything. Then I'll go back. I've been spending time trying to fix it certain areas, and I need to get more paint on this thing first. <laughs> that sounds really nice. Countryman Prime said, "Nothing like getting back into bed after a hard morning of doing nothing." Heck yeah! What the I hell? To have that tomorrow. How'd you get that job? Oh, it's already Saturday. He's a future timer. Yep. Time traveler. <laughs> like I said, you want to make sure you get enough even into your darkest black areas that you get coverage. You don't want to have anything that still stands out as being like a clean black. That's not the point. The point of the black was to just give you a very, very dark transition where you need it. Alright, we carry this line Watch across you. here. Haha, <laughs> ha, the oh, bot's working man. now. Donation received from Zexarander. I have a friend who is addicted to brake fluid. It's okay. He said he can stop at any time. No. <laughs> I told her about this. I told her she had to rap to it. She's not doing it. I love it. <laughs> That's the new shit right there. <laughs> totally a pun. Changed it up there at the end. That was awesome. Right? I told you it's awesome, right? We just had it from the pond by mistake, and I was like, more O's! That's freaking awesome! Thank you so much. Which, by the way, I think she even read a bad dad joke, by the way. dad joke in there. That I think I she threw a, like, I think she just threw a dad not joke lost in there. Friend addicted to brake fluid. No, uh, that was definitely on that one the other day. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I just I don't get it. It's so hilarious. Yeah, that would be an awesome sound command. And we can capture that. Um I think I can make her just read stuff. Really? Actually, yeah, I think so. I'll have to check. Seems like I can. I don't guarantee it, but Too bad. <laughs> Right? I was like, why? She makes a beat out of it, or like a melody. This is crazy. I wonder if somebody, like, actually programmed that, or if that's just, like, a, you know, it's just a, something she can't read. Or if they said, you know what? Here, check this out. I wonder if they'll figure this. <laughs> Hope you guys are seeing, like, how, like, this is one of those Kenny cheats, you know, that he would have a YouTube video that says, painting tanks is secretly easy. Right? Because, I mean, we get an amazing build-up. Look at that. It looks like we've done way more work than we have. I mean, it's, it should be illegal to paint tanks this way. Honestly. Like, there should be a knock on the door right now from the model police that say, uh, sorry, you you are losing your painting model license right now because you are, especially because you're trying to teach people these secrets that make it to where, you know, nobody has to actually work to paint tanks any longer. But it's normally difficult? Yeah, anything that's a large flat surface, you can imagine like when we're painting detail on the small models, you know, it's the the trouble is, you know, just grabbing all the details. But the details break the model up enough to where, you know, you don't have to worry so much about brush strokes, right? Like on the things you painted, it wasn't really about did you put any texture down? Was the paint consistent across a big wide surface because you can imagine a big flat piece of plastic. If you're painting with a with a brush especially, it goes from being dim to bright to dim to bright and then you go back over with the brush and you just move that around so it's a pain in the ass the airbrush can fix that what we're doing is now shading it to where ultimately you're getting see how bright we're getting this i mean this is almost to the point without even another layer of, of yellow highlight that this would be a great just beat up dirty tank right so we're getting a tremendous amount of work out of this little bit of effort i mean literally just a little bit of effort We need to get this bottom too. I kind of don't want to pinch the doors here. <laughs> that perceives that it's true. I have a half built razor back downstairs, and I'm just cursing you as you do 20 minutes of work to get. Ha ha ha! Right? 20 minutes. It took us three hours because of you know well, streaming. But you yeah, can see. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, you guys get to see that important. you know even though we've spent all day doing this, it literally is no time at all. Like across the amount of time that it would take you to do this if you were sitting there in your house, you know, drinking a beer, listening to a podcast, something like that. This is literally taking no time at all. 
We want to go ahead and coat the bottom enough to where we get a, a good layer of paint on there, but we are going to go ahead and muck up the bottom with a bunch of weathering, mud, and crap like that. You know, so, but we want to make sure we get enough paint on here that gives us a base. So any place where our mud gets thin, you can tell it wasn't just, you know, looking at primer. You didn't cheat the system too bad. Go ahead and get this running gear. I don't know if I'll paint that silver or what, but we'll go ahead and layer up a bit on it. And we're going to want that to all just come out and be very, very dirty in the long run. Anyway. I'd like to know if you've ever run into the issue where you're painting more of a green shade yellow. A green under the yellow? Um, if you use a yellow over the black initially, then yes, it will. Remember that with our octopus that we've been doing, notice how when we went straight over the primer and very, very thin yellow, how it kind of greens out because that's what we wanted in the skin. If you don't want that, then you need to make sure you go through more stages of brown before you get there. Yellow will never green over brown unless it's really dark. So you want to go up like this, like with the golden brown, before you then hit it with the bright yellow. Right, so just you're probably just missing a mid layer stage there if you if it's feeling like it's too green to you. Right, Kenny? It's crazy. You can do like a ultra amount of tanks right now. Kenny was talking about like the fifth edition times where he had to paint like twenty rhinos at once. This is literally the cheat that gets you there. Right? It's literally paint all your tanks in a day. Well, not, maybe not a day. Depends on how many details they got. You know, like I'm going to have to deal with Twinner on Sunday and show him how to paint salamanders when you have to add flames to this kind of a deal. Right? So, and of course we could have mixed all this paint. Right? We could have mixed all of our greens and gone back with our dark greens and highlighted this and then faded all this in nice and used all that color and not gone as light as we did it. And you can do that. Right? But it's going to give you a different look. Okay? So each of them has their strengths <laughs> and minuses. How realistic do you want? This is usually a way that you're going to uh, go over a tank that looks very, you know, World War II diorama. That's the world that I come from, and that's how this got applied to me. Now, we've kind of overstated it here. It's actually even dirtier than that. This is like, this would be a great desert rat tank, right? Something that was in the desert and just completely weathered by, by sandpaper blowing in the wind kind of a thing, right? You probably wouldn't do your panel lines near as dark and broad on like an eastern front winter tank you know you wouldn't have to uh because you're going to be doing a lot more uh like you know maybe whitewash weathering and things like that so you have to plan ahead again if you're going to be painting a tank and putting a lot of uh zimmerit on it then you wouldn't have to do this if you're going to be painting a tank and like i said do whitewash on it so it looks like the crew got out with big thick paint brushes and painted it white in the winter then you, you might not want to do this um because it's just a wasted step if you're going to cover it up with such a light coat after that all of this goes away in our case, this is exactly the weathering we're looking for. We want it to be a fairly clean, but well-used and well-worn tank, okay? So again, just plan ahead. You know, what do you want it to look like at the end? How dirty? How beat up? I could have very easily gone in with chipping fluid before this step, right? And then been able to chip it back. I figured, like, that was probably going to be too much for us to do tonight. It was going to, that would take a lot of time, and you guys wouldn't get to see the benefit of this layer right here as quickly as I wanted to show it to you. Make sure you get all these inside corners here that go dipping inside, even though we're going to paint this deal black. Fury, this is Rob Bach, actually. Who's here? Mike Fury. Mike Fury, what the hell's going on? This is Trucker Rob Boss coming at you, Breaker Breaker. If you don't know the war, the uh, the story behind the Long War Convoy, it's probably going to seem like, who is this <laughs> idiot, and why is he on Twitch? Why do they allow him to become partner? What the hell am I seeing? <laughs> Bear with us, His seriously. Hat is all dirty and sweaty. I licked this hat for five dollars and sixty-five cents earlier. I am a grade A, like absolute whore. I think is the right term today. I don't Sorry. even know why I said that. And it was the worst hat lick I've ever had. Just saying. Not that that's a thing that's that I would admit to having done a lot, but you know. You have much of a comparison? What's your frame of reference? Looked a few hats before. The clean ones at the store are my favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> the ones I'm not actually buying, those are the best ones. Oh my gosh, now everyone, when they go to buy a hat, is like, I wonder if somebody licked this. Right? None of these people in chat right now are ever going to go to a store anywhere near Phoenix and actually buy a hat again. Because they're going to be like, oh, or just God. Just in general, I maybe you're not the only one. Maybe it's a thing that we just don't hear about. Well, I mean, I do have some followers. Mother Hat Licker? Yeah, the Hat Lickers uh, United. <laughs> maybe you've heard of it. It's a great stream team on Twitch. Got a great fearless leader. <laughs> Name Rob Boss. Name Rob Boss. <laughs> Hat Lickers United. Get with the program, people.
Again, if you want to drive some of these shadows, ah! If you want to drive some of these shadows back, you just go in and start layering up. Like I might not want it quite so dark on the top of this eagle. I'll just layer up a little bit right along there. <laughs> instantaneously looks That's like I've true. spent way more time on the back end of this tank already than we have. Right? Great shading. Great highlight even, right? Because we had that white that we popped these edges with, and notice how even it looks like it's almost got an edge highlight to it. Because we painted that bright white, and we stayed off the bright white with the black. So it does a lot of our work. We're still going to go in an edge highlight. There's not, like, really a way that you're going to get away from some of this, right? You're still going to have to do the work. Right? But it just makes it easier. Is less concerned about people licking the hats than people trying them on the 30 hair life. Oh my but, god, now, know, now I'm not going to ever buy a hat. It, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I anytime, forgot about that. Like any, anything that you buy. That, you know store, what? There was a, there was a deal when I was a kid. <laughs> there was a deal when I was a kid that a movie theater, everybody got lice. Uh, in the theater oh. because of the seat backs, right? And then yeah. since then, they use something to spray that. on the seats and stuff like that. But for a while, I would go to the movie theaters and be completely freaked out. You know, I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to get squirmy bugs from watching this movie. I'm horrid. Bad. Make the bad man stop, mommy. Do you, um, this is a, this is a good statement, I think. I agree. Do you agree that condoms should be used at every conceivable occasion? Condoms should be used in what? At every conceivable occasion. Like to put on your hands before you eat? That kind of thing? What are we talking about? That's okay. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you people. That's, that's a bad one because I didn't even get it. So I blame the joke, not my ignorance. Thank you very, very much for participating. <laughs> it could have been my delivery, although I thought I delivered it pretty well. No, it's just because I trust you, and I thought it was a serious question, so I was doing the deduction part of the question and well, not worried about the conception word and all that. <laughs> yeah, you guys are all screwed. I don't trust any of you anymore. Yeah. Well, I guess I can cross going to the movies off the dwindling list of things I still do. <laughs> right? Right? Sorry, Steve. Poor Sapper, Steve. Came to the came here to learn about painting. Left knowing I'd never see a theater again. That's great. Thanks so much, gang. You guys rule. Say goodnight to Liz. I'm oh, sorry. Say goodnight to JP Great 87 twice, Liz. Liz. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for hanging with us, baby. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. I think we're kind of done with uh, golden brown. What do you guys think? I think we can go to yellow. You guys think you liking it? You liking it? You liking it? Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! Told you all that black was gonna start making sense, right? All that fade already looks like nice amounts of dirt everywhere on the tank. Got a really good build up on the top. If I can get in the light for you, right like that. <laughs> <laughs> now as we go to the brighter yellow we can knock back those shadows even more if you finish this layer and you felt like there were some things that you might have not liked as much maybe it's not you know uh the shadows are too much in certain areas not enough in others like i said i'm not super concerned with the underside i just kind of want to blotchy it up here give it a couple bright spots get this front lower glacis on this tank and give it a little bit more. We're going to put a bunch of mud and effects on this Don't eventually. Lean on the back of the chair. Everybody's going to start You're like wearing, a bringing hat. little towels or yeah. hats and something that they can put across the back of the, the chair. A, uh, a shower cap, maybe. That would work. Swim cap. Yeah, a swim cap would work. Swim cap would be good. That was good timing. We're out of golden brown. So that was two cups of golden brown that we used. So you are going to go through quite a bit of paint on this because, like I said, you're layering up. But it's not, I guess it's not really a lot of paint. It's more flow improver than anything, right? Because we were 60% flow improver, 30% paint on all those, or 66, 33, whatever it is, right? So just realize you're going to blast through some flow improver when you paint this thin. I didn't put any water in it, right? All flow improver. We didn't have any issues with clogging there after I got it mixed right. He doesn't. Um, what? We don't, we don't like that kind of talk in here. Somebody come in and try to be cool. 
somebody get their first ball drop <laughs> testosterone feeling? Had to say the word dick or something? Banished! <laughs> to be banished by Jin, you gotta be a real <laughs> top-notch character, so think about that for a second. History fact. Democrats tried to pass legislation in the 60s to ban bras. You know this? Not falling for it. <laughs> I'm just painting over here. This dude just paints. He's a big flop. This is just that guy with paints. That's a good one. Just telling you. <laughs> this is just that guy with paints. I have no idea what else to tell you about it. I'm teaching people about <laughs> tonk painting tonight. I don't know anything about your bad jokes, you bastages. <laughs> you bastages. <laughs> Oh, you can say it. All right, we're gonna go to. Uh, and and you know that's hmm. funny because he's normally not the target. We're gonna go to Yellow Ochre now. Okay. Shake that shit up. Shake that shit. And. Uh, banana, and then, banana, shake that shit. That one too. Seven drops of paint. Here we go. Evan Warp said, I assume that you suggested that I want a, a Dia Neo airbrush, not the Neo CN airbrush. This one. Hey, somebody likes us. A TRN1. <laughs> Bert, thank you so much. Bert. 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 Bert Again, flood that Yay. shit. Look how thin we are. Flood that shit. You want this to be basically dirty water glaze coming through here, and we'll just layer it up. You just got to be very, very careful on the trigger. You saw me spot the, the model in a couple of places where I'm going to have to go back and and uh, just use battle damage to cover it up, you know, as I was running fast and lose talking more than paying attention, right? But you want to, after you get a good mix, when you look at the sidewall of your airbrush, it should do that. It should really skin and basically be way more translucent than opaque, right? So if I <laughs> tilt it up on there, it's all going to flow back down. Just a little quick, or just a little slower than water would. Back fluid, get a little better mix. <laughs> Start getting paint going through here. Clean the tip. I'm going to put a glove on real quick because now we're going to be working wet and fast enough that if I handle some of the areas of this uh, model, I'm going to hate myself because I don't want to be pulling off big chunks of paint. Is ready for this. Put it on. It's already. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Moon River. <laughs> and away we go. Right. Really, really thin. I'm going to start right in here around this door area. <laughs> So many ridges. I don't feel bad for you. I ain't even mad. <laughs> I ain't even mad. How you choose to highlight this is up to you. How do you want to keep your your darker browns in here? Where do you want to get your edge highlights? Pick a light source. Maybe do just the middle of the panel. Is kind of what I'm doing, right? So I'm just starting to build up. You can see that how the wet is. I'm staying away from the edges. Right, except for back here where I wanted to lighten that black up a little bit around the hinges. Right? Because <laughs> it was a little darker over on this side. Right? Let's pull the same trick over here, lighten up right around that hinge. Is the Viper room still a thing? There you go. Yeah, in LA. Yeah. Yep, so Johnny Depp owns it. So or I think he did. Well, he might have sold to. it now yeah, that I think about I know it. River Phoenix died there. This one I'm just gonna start pulling right down the middle of these panels, branching off as I see fit, lightening up some of this stuff as we go but I want some of that golden brown to still sit in there and give us a halo of color and then I'm just going right down the middle and we're here same thing around where this satellite dish is gonna be sorry that might be getting a little loud as the air rushes down inside the cabin there <laughs> top of that bulb a little bit it was like 25 years ago but it's still too soon Uh, Yori would like to know if he found out 
those figures yet. Uh, which figures did you win, my friend? The, his wife keeps asking if you mailed out those figures yet. What's that? He just said, my wife keeps asking if you mailed out those figures yet. Did you want me to go ahead and mail out the Skaven? Is that what you're asking? Because I know I haven't. I pro okay, yeah, I misunderstood, man. I was going to keep them until we did the big guy. If you want me to mail them out ahead, I definitely will, man. I apologize for that. I totally missed that. Yep, I will do that. I will do it on Monday, my friend. Sorry. That's my bad. Tell your wife I'm very sorry. I totally misunderstood. I was going to keep them until the Lord was done. Now I feel bad. Because now it makes total sense to me that I probably should have thought about mailing those out at that time. Man, I feel like a schmuck. Sorry, man. Oh, I apologize. Again, just picking these areas. You can start to see how that yellow is starting to pop. Look back here on this edge here where there's no yellow. And then you can kind of look up here and see how it's starting to pull through. Go right in between these panels here. And just kind of lightly get this area. Don't want to brighten it up too much. Just kind of spot. Pull the brush back. Let it halo where I need it to. <laughs> front edge of these light housings <laughs> up on the front. Give us a nice pop. Again, dry it with some air. Go back and hit it again. Just keep layering it up till you get it as bright as you want it. Like I really want these light housings to be pretty bright on the front because we may do some OSL there. So notice I'm just hitting it at the front. I'll let that medium brown and then the medium brown over our black dump in and it looks exactly like if we'd have done the burnt umber, but we didn't have to worry about how precise we were with any of the shading. That's the whole point of this method right here. <clears throat> and dragging in that yellow. Right across the front of that lifted eye slot thing. I don't know what the hell you call it. Visor, maybe. Again, just be careful. Don't expect a lot of yellow to show up at once because, remember, we're working very, very thin. So I'm going to go in and hit these areas until I see pigment. Then I'm going to just go air, dry them so I don't get paint pooling up too bad. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more. Uh, I carry in that three kind of bright yellow spots there. Oh. I want to get the top of this visor a little bit, so I'll just come in tight. So, start lightening up right across the top so it's not like super dark. There's no reason for there to be a shadow across the top. Right, so we'll set it up for being able to drop a nice contrast highlight on there with a brush later on. Just by layering up that yellow. Like that. Lightens it up really nice. Let's do the top of these doors. Again, I'm just going to start in the middle of the door. The hatch, I guess it is. I pull it out. Layer it up as I get towards this hinge right here. That. Notice the difference between that one and that one. Same thing over here. Rinse, repeat, my friends. Rinse, repeat. Went a little thick on that one. Good. This little stand underneath the storm bolter here. It's going to be mostly in shadow, but I want to catch just these outside edges in yellow. <laughs> Back area is top deck here. More? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what what no. are you talking about? What? No. It doesn't concern you. Oh, geez. 
Now she's getting bratty about it. Down a little bit right in between these loops on the cable that's there. I don't want it to look too much like a spotlight, but get a little bit of brightness down in those areas. We might wind up going back with like oil weathering and, and you know, darken all that up again, but it's nice to have a good base to start from here because we don't know exactly what we want to do. <laughs> Brighten up this corner right here. Back in and stress some of these spots. These lower ones here. Notice how every time you go, everybody else gets pulled down darker. So it kind of guides you as you're going. We're not going like an ultra bright highlight here. So you still need to pay a little bit of attention as to not overdoing it anywhere because it does kind of fall in very similar to our previous coat. But go with your gut. And you can just pull from the top of these panels down very easy. Add on that front part there. So I got one more yellow we're going to put on here, but this is looking really, really good right now. I'm trying to do it so I don't have to have a glaze on the tank. The, the more you can stay away from a full body glaze on a tank, the better you are, which is why I'm working very thin. If I were to pile this yellow on really high, it starts to become kind of too pastel yellow. So that's why I'm working super water thin, almost like a glaze here, because I don't want to go back with a brush glaze where I have to tint the whole model if I can avoid it. It's a waste of time. And it gives you a lot of chances to really screw up, too, so I would like to not do that. The master model builders would laugh at me. They'd be like, what? You don't want a glaze? That's half the battle. I'm like, I'm tired of it. I'm old. I don't like it. Leave me alone. And I'm not going to put any of this bright yellow up underneath the hood here. Leave it in that golden brown, really deep, nasty. Right, that gives me enough to work with there. Now let's get these sides. Brighten up right underneath the light here a little bit, just in case we want to do some OSL. edges of these lamps or lamp housing I guess not really the lamp that get this front edge this line that runs right across the top here I want it's nice and dark I want to give it a little bit of pop on the front I'm gonna get it nice and tight got to really really watch it we're really really thin so working this close can screw you you do Paint till you see it get wet. Back off air. Paint air. Paint air. That. Just brighten just that edge. But I'm working super, super close in there to get that to pop that way. We'll do it over here too. And it's literally like feathering that trigger. Paint air. Paint air. Eight, eight, air, like so. Once there, bring that up a little bit. 
same thing on this leading edge here because I, I want to run with this visor open on this tank if I can. So. Rear skin tone sheet, sheet poster online somewhere. Uh, I send it to you via email if you'd like it. You can catch me on Facebook or, or uh, you know, just email slowfuse at slowfusegaming.com, and I will definitely send it to you. Uh, it did get posted on Instagram at one point in time, but it's probably buried back far. If you don't want to go looking for it, you can just easily send me a mess. I sent it out like six times yesterday. So, Yeah, definitely, Drago. Just uh, shoot me a message on Facebook. I am sleepy. I just, like, hit a major wall. Sorry. We had a long week. We're still doing a lot, a lot of stuff. So, for weeks and uh, being able to get up and be on the go instantaneously are getting rougher and rougher. All right, that. Work on these sides. And here we just want to kind of take the entire upper edge. So I'm going to come down about a quarter of the way down. So like right at these two little chunks here. All right. I'll go ahead and pull the yellow all the way down to there, feather it out, and then run across the top of the door. Down the other side, same thing. Thicken it up as I go. Just kind of layer it across the top and these little triangles over in the corner. So if those get brighter, always leaving the airbrush moving. Don't hold it still. You'll pull up. You'll hate yourself. All right, I think keep. either one ties okay. Layer it in like that. Doesn't matter which face, like if they send it to a fuse Facebook or. Nah, it doesn't matter. Either one. I get them all. Both. I'll kind of go with the thing and play. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more aggressive, bring it down a little bit further. Layer up as I go. If I bring it down halfway, then I'm going to go about a quarter of the way and layer it up up top so it gets brighter up top, obviously. Less so down below. So I get a really nice fade built up like that. Mm -hmm. that. Again, just finger control. Learn it. Live it. Make the airbrush work for you. Who's your daddy? What does he do? Oh, bummer. That's early. Hey, Snake Man, have a good weekend. Who's that? Snake Man. Have to hey, Snake. 4.30 for work. What? Top of those <laughs> pieces there. Go ahead and brighten those even more. Those will probably get a lot of weathering and down to, like, you know, steel chipping because those are the parts that would smack against the ground, so... Hey, Rob Monster, if you have any news on the Games and Gears product. What's that? Do you have any news on the Games and Gears product? No. As far as carrying it? Is that what you're asking? Who's asking? Okay, Rob. Yeah, I don't really have anything that I can tell you that's really good right now. It, it hasn't been on my list of things to handle. we got so much else going on with the house. But as soon as we're back to being able to focus on the store stuff, then... It definitely will get handled. Ooh, we do have a lot of really a good news coming up this month, though, so... Less than a month, you guys. It's crazy. Just, again, working the pack. bright on the top of these stacks. Even though we might soot them back down, we still want to start from a nice, bright base that matches all the overall brightness at this level. Our levels work, obviously, top to bottom along the sides. So you just want to kind of drag the same fade in that you're doing on each of these spots. Gosh. Right. Right. Bring down this yellow, as you can see me layering it in. Bring it down as far as you do on the doors. Uh, if I've got it down too far on the on the stack, then you know just go ahead and fade it down on the door. Don't wind up chasing too far. If you get it down too far on one, and you look at it and you say, if I go any further, it's really going to look stupid, then just stop and have one be unlevel. That's an easier story to tell visually than to say, oh, just keep chasing it to where now your bright level, your bright yellow reaches all the way down to the bottom, right? Because then you're just gonna lose, right? You just lose in the whole battle. Why did you just do all this stuff if that's what you're gonna do? As much as I hate to leave all the really great jokes, I think I gotta go to bed. Who's that, you? <laughs> yeah. He's wimping out on you. I'm so tired. I was just gonna try and make it, but... You did good, babe. Hell, you usually are, like, leave right after the... Last week you had to leave right after the, uh, the treasure trove, didn't you? I think so. Maybe. You did good! Thank you, baby. 
say good night, Jen. Yeah. It's every time I I look around, I see all the stuff that has to be moved. And sometimes I don't want to think about it, but it's all I can think about. <laughs> it's all we can think about. All right, again, so, just trying to keep these levels as much as possible for all my fades. Get a little aggressive in this center section here. Bring these down just a little bit more. All right, everybody. Yeah, JP, I would say start packing now. That's six months. Plenty of time. I have started. Done more than he has. He has done more now. I'm going to be doing it tomorrow and probably Sunday, too. I'll give you an update next week. Bye, everybody. I love you guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks, nice, baby. I love you, too. Too. Even though you do like those bad jokes. I probably like you even more because you like the bad jokes, just to be honest. Okay, again, up here, you don't want to go too much of a fade because you got a shorter distance. So you want to get enough to where it gives you the visual, but you still don't want to break this boundary too much. We've already come down further than we have on the other stacks because it already starts lower than where our fade ended pretty much, right? But you just want to tail it off very quickly. It still gives us a nice glow up front. And again, guys, I'm not really doing anything special here. This is the only technique that I'm really using right now is because we're working with such, you know, watery thin paint is trigger control. On, off, on, off. Paint, no paint, paint, no paint. That's all I'm doing right now. It's not even like, I don't even have to really get close because overspray is not a huge deal when you're doing these blends. When you're working so thin, you want all that to come through. And I'm trying not to get too much overspray in our black areas and things like that, but uh, everywhere else, I mean, I don't really care. It's so thin that unless you're really pointing at an area for a while, it's not gonna have enough attitude uh, on the model to make a difference, right? Now you're just stuck with me. Ha, ha, ha. You're stuck with me. You guys keep thinking I'm stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. Name that movie. Who can name that movie? Yeah, there you go. Uncle Touchy, on it. Best comic character ever. Rorschach. Very good, very good, man. How do you like that? Look pretty good. Feeling that fisty vibe. Oh, wait, can I say that out loud? That's kind of weird. Go right across this top edge and just kind of accentuate this top edge right here. I want to keep that shadow that is on that panel line that's from the putting the model together panel line. But I want to accentuate this edge just a little bit. We'll get more out of it with the edge highlight, but by going through and just hitting it with the airbrush, it gives us a little bit of extra real estate so the edge highlight doesn't sit completely on a uh, dark edge here because it doesn't make sense on the top to do that. On the sides and stuff, we could get away with it and not really care. But on this edge right here, I don't really want to have it just like, you know, sitting completely on a, a dark boundary. Same back here. Go ahead and highlight this edge up a little bit. And catch the top of this fender as it goes down. It's going to be a little bit harder because i got this smoke launcher here that i got to worry about. Move the airbrush around a little bit. Get that fade going. Ah. Down bottom here, just the top area. Darkness, thank you, man. Appreciate you hanging with us. Afraid of overspraying onto the other models on my table? Nah, eh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I never think about it until I pick one of them up and I go, oh, damn. I, I'm controlling the airbrush and keeping my, my spray to the model pretty well, angle-wise. But yeah, you probably don't want to, if you're just starting airbrushing, please don't work with your, your space like I am. Do as I say, don't do as I do. There's no overspray on any of this right now. You know, I mean, we I'm 
really, really precise with my airbrush, so I'm not really worried about it. The bigger thing that I tend to do that causes me problems sometimes is that when I'm cleaning the airbrush, some of the goop, like when I'm slopping it around, I'll pick up a model later and there'll be a drop of like bright green on a gray model and I'll be like, oh, because when I was cleaning the, the airbrush and I, you know, just a drop of paint flew out of it. So, like I said, do as I say, not as I do on those things. I'm horrible about it. Don't worry, if you ever have a commission done by me, you won't get your model and have it have like a random stray color of paint on it. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I do fix things. Come back and accentuate these doors a little bit more, drive those shadows back a little bit, get those hinges a little bit more. Same with this one. paint onto that hatch. I'm very, very happy with that though. Let's get this. I forgot to do the surround on the hatch though, so let's do that real quick. Let's get some of these top edges here. Again, pushing in real close. Keep the brush moving. I don't want to get too squirrely with it. I'm not worried about the lights or the vision ports on it. I'm just trying to get the areas in between there real quick. Try to get the top here real quick, just all the way around the perimeter from the top. So, get some of these panel edges down here, just where the corners kind of jut out, right? Like you got all these squarish panels. I'm just catching the corners and brightening the corners. Not worried about the line edge. It's too thin, right? So, like as I go bright yellow to bright yellow, what will happen is as I'll line that in with bright yellow and all of that will get pulled together. I can fade it a little bit if I want to, if it's too drastic. Like right here, it's pretty drastic. Yeah, I get that yellow and there's a line. So I'll go in here and fade that a little bit. Pull in a little bit. Right? See how right here I've got that line where I built up too much paint. So I'll just come in and lightly pull that up right there. And then go back with just air. Dry it out. And then I'll pull up more paint. Dry it out. Pull up more paint, dry it out. Repeat as necessary until I got that to where it's now much cleaner. Transition across that corner. Just feather the paint. Something there, like that. Brighten these areas up over here. The thing you want to avoid also is going in and like notice how I'm just painting in this little kind of booger area. Notice how I'm also overspraying onto the shadow again. You don't want to just paint inside the previous area, right? Like I could just paint inside the door like this kind of weird shape that the door makes and I could go dark and then pull in and go light and then pull in and go lighter and pull in and go lighter. You don't want to do that. You want to have every layer cover the entire surface pretty much. You just want like one layer of this very thin paint around the whole thing and then like two layers in as you go in and three layers as you go tighter and four layers as you go towards the middle. And then with the next color, one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers. So you're building up every color of paint on every surface of the model. But the, as we're working so thin, you're not going to really know. But you don't want like this bright yellow to kind of just sit in the inside. It starts to look fake, right? You want it to just be less where you've got the shade. Make sense? So again, like as I'm working right here, I'm not just spraying right in the middle. I'm coming out here and letting a little bit of, of uh, paint build up around the smokestack, around the rope. And then I want to get a heavy line right here as we go across this corner edge and down the fender. I want to build up a little bit more paint here, get it brighter there on the edge. Okay. On this butt end a little bit. Again, just hitting all the shadows real quick around this area with it, just to tent them, and then focus more on this middle area now. After I've faded out the shadows, and then more and more as I get towards the edge. I'm really building up and working more on this edge than anywhere else in here. That little triangle, and then all of it right down here at the bottom. The bright yellow. 
it. So I get a really nice fade from my darks to my mid browns are still popping through there. And then we get more just yellow ochre. And everything looks dirty, right? That's the whole goal here, guys. Super grunge. They're tanks, man. Have fun with them. Make them tell your biggest story. They're some of the biggest models in your army, for Christ's sakes. Give them some love, but this is quick love. Right? A little bit of brightening up right there on that little kick-in. A little bit more in the shadow area right here from the trunk that's up here on the side. Liking that. Top surface is looking rather nice. This back. Take a look at you guys for a sec. Sec. Tried to get your airbrush, Yori, and said I couldn't pay it enough to work for me. <laughs> they do that every now and then, man. They're cantankerous bastards. Uh, I'm done. I'm not even reading it, Uncle Touchy. Are you kidding me? Will work for space puppies, Boshek. I can almost read that. You just got surgery made Liz move us last time, JP. I, that won't work too many times, though. I can maybe try that. Oh, baby, I'm not feeling well today. Can you lift the heavy shit? I don't think it'll work. I don't think it'll work. You'd wear the shapes changing mask, too, with the giant blue guy walking around and the buff. Yeah, exactly, right? Hey, is that a big blue penis? That is a big blue penis. Ah! The coming darkness. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Blackwater Terrain, have a great weekend, man. Congrats. Let's get you out, too. Can't make it any longer. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. Thanks for hanging with us. All Kenny gives is quick love. Are you kidding me, man? Kenny's love is quick and brutal. Get this area right across the top edge is where we're going to focus most of our brightness here. Keep moving. Building up. Right. Nice build up on that edge. Remember, we got that white that was there, so now it almost gives us a glowing edge highlight, right? Boyfect. Boyfect. Now we'll start coming down these edges on the side. Again, just like we did on the side, just build up up top. Make sure you bring the yellow all the way down, but in thin layers, and then just keep retreating up to the top. Layering up more and more and more. Then down, layer up more and more and more, then quick down. Spend some time up top, quick down. Top, quick down. Bingo. All right? Move over here. Spend some time up high. Moving the brush. Airing this like half inch area, then quick down. Air dried off. We're building up a little bit too much paint. Take a little bit down. Build it up. Air. Build it up. Air. Right. Match it side to side. Same thing across here. Build up some paint. As we're going around the Aquila here, make sure you get this overspray into all those shadows. Don't be stingy. And then just fade it down. Very light. Spend some time up top. All in the same area up top, about a half inch, and then quick down. Spend some time up top over here. Right, building up, building up, building up, and then a quick fade down. Quick fade underneath the Aquila real quick. More time over here. Time over here. Quick down. Bingo. Brighten all that shit right up. A little bit further down on this side. Bingo. Match them up. Pro, dig it. Let's get this fender. Outside edge, build it up, quick down, build it up, quick down. Here we go. Match that other fender. Looking good. Uh. To the side. Blowing and going. Start at the front here. Again, build up. 
think. Where was I trying to do my transitions at? Like, look at the other side. <laughs> look at the other side. I think right there. Right, yeah. Okay, so right there at that knuckle on these things is kind of where my brightest build up then runs straight across. So let's just make sure. Make sure you check. Keep your sides. Even though you can't see both sides at once, you just want to be consistent. If somebody picks up the model, you send it to a client if you're painting for a client, right? Paint for yourself. It'll be something that always bugs you if you don't watch it. Again, build up. Quick. Down. Build up right here at the top. Right here. Right? So just focus the airbrush in this little circular motion right up top until you start getting it built up with enough yellow to feel bright enough like everything else. And then just kind of quickly thread it down to fade it and everything else. Remember that this front area, you don't want to go too heavy. Maybe a little bit more than that. Notice how I'll do that a lot. I'll just kind of focus in an area and then quickly drag it down. You give me that fade. Build up in here just a little bit more. Then we'll go to the smokestack here. I'm building up right underneath these fins. Get it bright, quick down. Bright, quick down. I'm going to go up here, bright. Then I'm running down this vertical stripe over and over and over again. Air. I feel like I built up too much there almost. And then did the same thing over here on the sides. There's nowhere to bring this down, so I'm just going to focus here, get some paint on it. Right? Air. Paint. Air. Paint. Air. Paint. Air. Paint. Air. Anything on the side here. And over here. Focus. Quick down. Very annoying as I repeat that a million times, but it's literally that flick. Focusing up top and then flicking the brush down that does all the work for you. That. Uh, I'll build up right there at the bottom, brighten that front edge up. I want to get this front here too. Like that. Get that consistent fade from top to bottom there. I've got my mix. We're running. I think we're going to have enough. I think we probably mixed just enough, boys. Top here, quickly bring it down, focus on this top edge again, right across the door. Over this other side, again, build up right here in this area up top. Focus in there until I see it get as bright as I want it. Sinking all those shadows above the door away, right? Not all away, right? But enough. And bring it down the edge here and focus again up top, where I've only got these little quick streaks down the side of the door. Bingo. Same thing again on the door, man. Repeat. All these things are the same. Doesn't matter what the surface is. Pick where your highlight is. Dump in that red or dump in that paint. Red paint. Don't dump in red paint, please. No red on my model. Red does not make Imperial Fist tanks go faster. Just a pointer there. Top bends here, getting real close, build up some. Build up on one as it starts to pull, go to the next one, starts to pull, go to the next one, go back to the first one, next one, next one, always keep the brush moving. And get golden.
tighten this up a little bit. I feel like I brought the rest of it up a little high, so I'm going to... Not a little high right where I want it, but I feel like I didn't do that as well on the front here, so I'm going to brighten these up just a hair. That. I feel like that's where we're at for the rest of it. Yeah. Nice and bright over here. Right in front. Right on this side. Oh! I you got the box out. Does that count for progress? Yes. Thank you for joining us, my friend, and thank you so much for the support. Always appreciate it. Have a great weekend if I don't see you again on Sunday. I will be around on Sunday again. Don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll be figuring something out. Again, loving this fade. It's working out really well. Almost like I don't want to go much further than yellow ochre. I'm almost thinking we can stop and not even have to hit it with the next color if we don't want to. Might be stretch. We'll look at it against some of the other figs and see if we want the tanks to be this dark or if we want to go brighter with them. We got the choice. And it's just a matter of choosing how much you want your uh, tank to. It doesn't have to be the same color, right? A lot of times it makes sense to have it in the same range. But not exactly like your troops, but I leave that up to everybody. You know, I have clients that want it exactly the same color and work up as the troops. And sometimes you got the vehicles can be in that same hue, but the values can be different because they would wear differently. You know, yeah, the Omnisaya and the Tech Priest would be taking care of all this stuff. The tech Marine would be all over it, ungents and oils and all that kind of crap, but it's still a big beast of a tank, right? They're not going to repaint the damn thing every single time it goes out to combat I don't think and the tank gets weathered a lot differently than a dude running through the mud right because it weighs tons and tons and tons as opposed to just spit on the model fuse that'll be great that'll work great it'll do great things trust me As opposed to a dude that even a space marine with as much as a space marine weighs isn't going to pick up as much of the dirt and grime from the earth as he walks around as a tank will. You, know? you can play with that notion and that's how you can tell a story of all of your big vehicles. Big stompy robots can be dirtier than the rest of your guys because they're trudging around dreadnoughts, things like that. You know, it can be tons and tons dirtier. More natural weathering matching in with like the base weathering that you're doing and stuff. Not necessarily having to have more... You know, chips and bullshit are on them. I'm not saying that. Building up, building up, building up up here. And then there's a lightweight spray coming down there. That. Then focusing in this little area just enough to blend it down. Fade it down. Bingo. Add that. Our other dudes are going to be a little bit brighter yellow, right? So our dude dudes are brighter. So I'm thinking that uh, we probably do want to eventually come up one more level, I think. Our normal yellow workup is that much brighter spot on there. And I'm not going to be able to pick up that much difference with just an edge highlight. You know, an edge highlight will change the the hue a little bit of for your eyes, but because these are such large panels, we're gonna have to go up again. I just that that yellow is just too much more it's just too much brighter, right? It this yellow makes this look like sand. It looks like it's from a different army. So we are gonna have to push it. Right. This guy closer. I think it needs it though. 
I think it needs to come up another layer. Probably not going to do that today. I feel like you guys get the drift. Righty righty. Tidy whities. Boshek, it's a great color. Uh, yellow ochre is a fantastic color for doing, uh, you know, any kind of military vehicle that you want to go into, like, the desert colors. You can do this yellow ochre, and then you can take it into, like, desert yellow, um, which is more of a sand color, right? And you could start doing a sand dusting over it. You could get a very good, like, Africa core color. Um, you know, it becomes that German camo yellow kind of thing with a good buildup. Right, but we've still got a real good dusty buildup here without having to weather anything, right? And, uh, and notice how all of that black paneling that we did disappeared entirely. But you still get these kind of oily looking lines that we don't have to wash in. So it doesn't give us any water spotting. It doesn't give us any coffee staining. None of that, right? Now we can still go back and pin wash some of these areas if we want specific oily grit. Um, we'll do that uh, on this tank. We'll come back and take some of the rivets and make drips where we need them. Uh, you know, like oil stains and things. But for the most part, you know, you're looking at what you're going to get. Like, notice how all of our panel lines have pretty much fallen away to just bare shadows, right? And remember how ugly they were? Like, all of this was just real, real ugly black airbrush lines. But because each time you're pulling that yellow up, you're going over those same areas. That's another reason why I told you, don't just stick into the inside of the panel with the next brighter color. Do the whole thing once quick, very thin. See if that knocks the shadow back the way you want it. Then focus on the interior, focus on the interior. Come back over the whole thing if you need to, if after bringing the interior up bright, these look too dark. Go over the whole thing again. You don't have to go back to the previous color if you do it this way. You can always be layering the next color, never having to reach. This wig is hilarious, isn't it? I'm watching my own wig hair as it's doing its thing. Um, but, you, you know, you don't have to retreat back to another paint mix as long as you got good coverage everywhere, right? And I feel like we nailed it. Right? I feel like you know you got the back, good fade there. Really liking it. I feel like I missed this area right in here. Again, let's do our due diligence here. And before I just some days when I'm streaming, I'm just like, all right, time to go to bed, and then I just quit. And then I come back the next morning, and I'm like, oh man, I really needed to have done this area on this tank. Bring in a little bit of that yellow there, just so we don't lose it. Let's do this top edge on this side, question mark. I think that's the one we just didn't do. What did we do over here? No, I think we just did this side, didn't we? Right. Really like what I'm seeing on all of that. I think this needs to get hit. Little section right here. Get a little bit of this yellow built up. Again, if you don't hit an area with this color, it's going to look funny, right? Because it's just going to be your previous layers. It's going to look really flat compared to everything else. So even if it's not something that you think light wise would really make sense, you still want to catch just like a corner of that, brighten it up. You can come back and, you know, layer it down later if you need to, if you feel like you overdid it or that really shouldn't have been that bright or whatever. You know, we're still going to do a lot of weathering on these things, so we don't have to worry too much. Uh, this front panel, I'm going to hit just a little bit right across the top. Lightly working that in there. Even though we didn't hit that with much of the uh, the golden brown, we can still get a good effect on that edge. Right? I pretty much just didn't remember to hit this with the golden brown. But if we feather this stuff in here, we can do... Are we not? Oh, we're almost out of paint. we can still get a nice tight edge on that, right? And just fade it down into that darkness anyway. Be a little bit of different color there. We're going to have a lot of mud on the front of the tank, so I think we can whirl that one and not worry about it too much. 
little things on the side here. Like that. Brighten this whole panel right across this front edge a little bit. So, like in everything else I'm seeing. Right underneath here again. Looks like I didn't build up quite enough underneath this lamp housing. I'm just going to go hard in the paint right here. Can't really brighten up. Hey, the somebody steps. likes us. I am not even going to try that name, but welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. I don't even know what to do with that name. Rocket Chicken, adios, man. Is this just one yellow so far over the gray, white, and black stuff? No, it's two. It was golden brown first. We had golden brown, and then we did yellow ochre. So two colors so far. So it really is just gray, black, and white, and then those two colors. And that's how we're getting that golden brown that you're seeing, or that golden yellow falling in on that fade down to this, you know, dark. So it's really starting to pop and come together. And then we've got one more yellow to do over it, you know. Which may make me, you know, may force me to kind of pull these yellows down a little bit further than they are right now. If I was going to decide to do this, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Just kind of real quick while I have this paint in here. I'm going to go ahead and force this yellow to drop down a little bit further than we got it into the shade. Remember, like just like when we're working with a brush, we want to give our next highlight a good landing zone. So we don't just wind up right up at the top. Right, so I'll just pull it down a little bit further. Right. I think I'm happy with everything on top, pretty much. Maybe a little more right in here. Right along the side, maybe. Kind of pick and choose. There are no really rights and wrongs. You just don't want to have a, a whole area that's left unattended, right? You don't want to be looking across the tank and have, you know, something that just is sitting in pure darkness still if uh, if you've done all the other layers, right? Bring everything up in a common manner. Right. I want to move over to... the other side and drag those yellows down over there a little bit too. Or was that this side that I needed to do that on? I can't remember. I feel like I just did this side already. I'm just bringing my yellow fade down to these two bolts now on this side. So that when I drop the brighter yellow in, it's got enough spot to really pop out. Yeah, it was that side. Same thing over here. I'm just going to basically bring it down for that whole front panel there. Bring it down a little bit further all the way around. Doesn't hinder us much because a lot of this yellow that we're doing now is supposed to be in the brightest yellow will wind up being another shadow that we're dropping in, so it'll work well. Either way, get these doors and do the same thing. All right, up with the front. Back, maybe bring the back down a little bit further, too, just for the same reason. yellow onto that handle on a ton but pop that a bit applying the same frame of reference 
give myself enough space around some of these real thin areas to drop that brighter gold in there. So just thickening up these highlights. Right here. Out a little bit further. These front fenders here. Again, you know, noticing that and putting that model up next to there is val it has a tremendous amount of value because it tells you, okay, I got to come back over the whole model and add a little bit more. And that was perfect because I think we just ran out of paint. Bingo. Turn that out real quick so I don't forget. Otherwise, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll be mad at myself because this will be sitting here crusted up with yellow ochre. That's never a good thing, no matter what they told you in school. We didn't have a whole lot of problems. You notice how as we were running through the tank here, I didn't I don't think I cleaned the needle once. Right? Maybe right at the beginning as we were doing the golden brown, because I think I still had a little bit of chunky goodness in there from the uh the base coating. Right. But uh after we moved on to the yellow ochre, you didn't have to see me ever clean the, the nozzle on this bastard. So that's how thin we're running our paints. Like I said, two thirds Flow improver, one-third paint for when you're doing this kind of work because the goal is to run it as as thin as you possibly can and still feel comfortable about getting paint to go on the model without pooling and spreading, right? You notice we only had a couple of instances where the paint kind of spread on me because I was just talking more than paying attention, right? And so, uh, you know, you get to come back and fix that later on with battle damage or whatever. But notice how you get these real gold and almost rusty feeling spots on there right because of the way we shaded with the golden brown more golden brown heavy up here so that when we layer that brighter yellow on there we retain that kind of good transition that's dirt right we're basically painting dirt it's not just painting dark and highlight and then weather we're painting all of the weathering at the same time right we have all these dirty panels We go over it with that bright yellow, it's really going to start to pop. It's already looking great. Like, literally, I wouldn't be mad at just painting the details and put this on the table. Right? Throw some mud on the tracks, paint the guns, paint the emblems on the side, it'd be great. If this was how I was starting the army, I might actually stop it here and do this yellow across all the dudes. Now that I'm staring at it, I really like it. Right? But I already did the bright yellow on the troopers and on the uh, Admec stuff, so I don't want to I don't wanna mess that up, because I am happy with those as well. I could take the time to go back and glaze those guys down and, and put everything in this layer of, of yellow. But I think this is too orange. I'm liking it. I'm staring at it. It's a nice warm color. But I think that on my Imperial Fist armor, I need more yellow. Right. It needs to be a brighter yellow. Oh, yes. I bet I need to do that, don't I? You tried to fast forward me to the end to see what the model looks like? <laughs> Take it to flash gets, you bastard. I'm not going to flash gets. I don't even own flash gets. I don't even know that color. You're making shit up, Kenny. You're painting some Hakazon for your Infinity Collection, but you can't find a good sandy color for your desert camo. Any suggestion for a color? Why wouldn't this work? I think this would be great. Right? You could take this. You could take golden brown to yellow, uh, to the yellow ochre that we're using, to desert yellow. Right? 
this dark, or no, that's dark flesh. Why did I just grab dark flesh? Where's my desert yellow? Is it desert yellow? Desert yellow. All right, you can do that. That works great. Right? So just go desert yellow right off of that yellow ochre. So you have this, but then you'd be putting tan as your next color as opposed to bright yellow. But it still works really well because you get all this dirt and grit color in there. So you can do that for sure on troopers or tanks or whatever you want. I mean, Infinity doesn't have tanks, but yeah, you can do that. Just taking it up to desert yellow as opposed to working at a yellow. You got to remember, like these base coats that we're doing are setting up other colors. So you can go from, you know, golden brown, uh, yellow ochre and into this and work just fine. And in some cases, you might want to have more of this show. And so your your yellow ochre does a very limited amount of job to just tie these two together. So it doesn't have to be a lot of this on the model, you know, just a very narrow band or, or glazed over, you know, and then this. See, that, that works great and gives you a really nice de desert camo color. That's the way I would work it up. You could avoid the yellows and you could go with uh, golden brown and then go up through like maybe more uh, reddish browns, you know, into like terracotta. I don't think that would look as good though. I think I'd do that. Yeah, I think I'd do that. You always paint your models a couple shades darker, Rocket Chicken. Then they're supposed to be more grim dark. Yeah. Well, you can still take it up bright and then knock it back down with a glaze or just with the final weathering. Like a lot of my guys, they still look bright yellow because I haven't done any of the, the final stages. You know, like this guy is just simply at the point where we've got him, you know, nearly ready to go. But you notice how we've got that same nice rusty kind of shading with the golden browns and the yellow ochres. The color of our tank is sitting right there on his knee. We're just going to take it up to this a little bit brighter, right? So, I mean, that's the key here, and that's where we're going to wind up being, right? So, notice how, look at this headlight case versus that knee. The only thing we're really missing, right, is that brighter lemony yellow dropping over the top of it, and then bingo, you're right there. And I like the stuff on the right better. This is a better yellow. You know, this is still more of an orange and kind of a sunset yellow, and that's not what Imperial Fists are, you know. I mean, not that I'm trying to make them exact to any kind of historic reference in fiction, but, you know, I want them to, to you know, pop with the yellow. Because there's going to be a lot of black in this army, because it's the the uh, first company. So it's all the veterans, all the Templar brethren. And so there's a lot of black and a lot of white. And so I really want the yellow to pop along with that and complement it all. Right, so. It's going to be good either way. They look really good together, though. I'm not mad. I don't like rhinos. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't like them. I mean, they, they look like, you know, Vietnamese-era troop carriers, so I'm not mad at the design. I just For some reason, I just don't like the tank. They're kind of plain. But this one's a command when it's got the satellite dish on it. I haven't built the satellite dish yet, so i got to get off my ass and build that thing and paint it, too, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of yellow on there that we could have done at the same time. But whatever, man. Wait, we both did yellow tonight? And you're the hobo that brush-painted it? Yes! Yes! <laughs> I watched you brush painting yellow. And then I came in and did the airbrushing tonight. Roll reversal! It's Freaky Friday! Blood Angels this way would be the exact same thing. You'd just go with, like, a mahogany up to red. I wouldn't go with mahogany because you did all the black and, and gray and white on here. So, again, you get to transition out of your darkest color layer. It saves you that. You do the black, you do the white, you do the gray, or, or actually reverse. You do the gray uh, uh, primer, you do the white highlight, then you do the black panel lining and the black lower shading on the on the vehicle. Then I would go over it with like a blood red and then a bright red. So you really only have to use those two colors probably for blood angels. And then highlight, you know, just edge highlight around the top, you know, and do your chipping and whatever else you want to do. Red would be a lot easier. I think you could probably get away with just two colors and do that and be really, really happy with it. Yellow is a little more finicky because you have to build up from a brown or else you're going to get that green, you know, and right now there's no green on this. The, all the panel lines and everything are really nice, like deep, dirty, oily brown. So I'm not going to have to repair any of this with like pin washing unless I've got a spot where I really want to accentuate like a rivet or, you know, a, a, a detail on the model that, you know, just did, either didn't pop or that I've got to go back to anyway, like, you know, the smokestacks and things like that. You know? So I've, I've, I get the like maybe around the, the steel cable here that I've got, 
I could have like rust streaks coming off the steel cable. The tank wouldn't rust, but the, you know, maybe the, the streaks would come off of that. So I could pin wash all that on all those kind of details that you don't, you don't spend the time worrying about with the airbrush at this point, you know, you're going to pick all that back out and we will do some dry brushing on this guy. Uh, I think vehicles are the one thing that always deserve a little bit of edge dry brushing. It'll help pick out a little bit of a thicker layer on the edges to land your, your bright highlight on. Um, so we'll do that with whatever color we wind up landing on it next. If I mix a yellow or if I go straight on it with a yellow RLM, we'll see. Uh, and then I would go through with like yellow RLM and I'll go through and dry brush. Because on the airbrush, it's never as as opaque and bright, hence, you know, uh, the aerosol effect versus, um, you know, going with even a dry brush and dry brush that medium yellow across the whole tank. So I'll pick up all that detail down low with that medium yellow as well. And then we'll go back and line highlight the top edges. So we'll probably do that on Sunday, right? I can help work uh, a little bit that. That'll help transition because I've got uh, Twinner and I are doing a, a different form of tank painting as an individual one-on-one -on -one tutorial for him. He's painting a bunch of salamanders. So we'll be doing that to show a different way to do it um, and get a very similar effect, albeit at the end of the day, it will look different, not only because it's green versus yellow, but because uh, the method will be different. Yeah, let me grab that model, Sidebound. Hold, please. I shall be back. We got to show off Sidebound's custom sculpted model. We do, we do, we gonna do it. Sidebound's multi-hundred dollar custom sculpt just busted into 16 pieces on my floor. That's fantastic. Thank you much. Alright. Can I take the glove off now? The gloves are off! This model is freaking gonna be rad to paint. I'm excited. It's excited. Joxel. One of the amazing sculptors here on Twitch Reno is responsible for this model. And we are the lucky recipients of getting to paint it. This arm isn't going to stay on. Some of these things aren't going to stay on. I didn't put it together yet, so I don't think these are going to pull. Maybe. 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 I don't think the leg is going to hold. The leg's not going to hold. Right, so it's a very large, like 100 and something millimeter sculpt. The head's a little wobbly on there. Right? I don't know who this character is, Sai, so you can talk about who she is. But she's got big ass wings as well. I can get them to go on there. And hold these. And get her to where you can see sort of what's going Good God. I haven't glued her together, so this hey, is going to be very somebody difficult. Somebody likes us. Pick that out. Look how bitchin'. Righteous Greek, thank you so much for the follow. Look how bitchin' this is gonna be. These big angel wings are freaking awesome. Right? Great sculpt. Nice resin cast. Very short skirt. <laughs> and boots. Here, we'll take that leg off. Okay, I can kind of get a feel. It's gonna be spectacular to paint. I'm really psyched. It's going to be good. I just, I'm, I'm enthralled by the wings more than anything else. But the body is, is actually very, very good. Dox is an amazing sculptor. Lots of dynamic motion on this, obviously with the pose. And then you just get these damn wings up behind her. It's freaking amazing. It's going to be freaking awesome. I haven't really gone over the colors yet. I know you sent them to me, Sai, but I haven't really thought about it. Oh. Big enough that we're going to get to play a lot with the uh, the airbrush in tight, 
and then do a ton of brush work on this is going to be nice because we got a lot of smooth surfaces on our skin. Uh, you know, a lot of smooth surfaces on the fabric. Very little cleanup that I got to do on this model. A little bit in the folds here just to smooth out some of the crevices in the, in the clothing to smooth that out. But by and large, really, really nice. Lots of open surfaces so we can either create our own textures or, or keep it clean if, if that's the deal. I don't know the background, so Cy Brown's going to have to teach me, right? Character from the Breath of Fire. Yeah, nice. Oh, her form from three of the games. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is Joxel Ruckus. Yeah, so he got done doing this one and sent it off to us, and I'm really, really stoked to, to paint this up. We're going to do a custom base for it, something that gives it a lot more balance. And uh, it's going to be neat. I'm, I'm super stoked on it. Doxel does an amazing job, and this is going to be a, a great, great model to work on. Down the road. It ain't happening anytime soon. we got lots in the queue before it, but it's going to be a blast when we do get to it. Super stoked. Oops. Drop the pin. Damn you. Whew. What a day. I feel like we did a lot of really cool shit today, guys. Yardog. Pirate cat. What? Mm-mm-mm, Kenny. Mm-mm-mm. You only paint on weekends. Your weekdays are consumed with jazz, ballet, and gymnastics. Sapper Steve, is that a child-induced thing? Wicked Wombat, it has not bothered me tonight. I've been having such a good time. I think that when the wig bothers me, I'm probably either too focused on something I'm doing, and I'm I'm really intent on, oh my god, let's get to do you know, and I'm and then the wig bothers me. Tonight I haven't even noticed it's on. Like I'll look up and I'll be like, ah! Because I see myself in the in the stream. Oh, that's hilarious. Right. Hope you guys have learned a lot with this tank. Um, I'm hoping that for those of you that have airbrushes, you know, that are comfortable using your airbrushes, that this gives you another tool in your toolbox uh, to kind of run with and not be afraid of vehicles. Um, it should alleviate some of that fear because, again, like a lot of what Kenny and I show you and what Rob shows you and the, our real focus on the long war is to take away the mystery behind some of this painting stuff. It's not voodoo, right? Uh, yes, it takes a lot of experience and time invested practicing to make sure that you can have trigger control, that you can maintain your airbrush properly, that you can have brush control as you want to pull a very fine line. Um, all of that takes experience. I'm not trying to belittle it. So anybody out there that's been painting your whole life and feels like you have all that time invested, we're definitely not trying to say, oh, it's all easy. But that is kind of the joke, right? Because once you invest in that practice, 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 anybody can really do it. If you if you have, you know, the ability to have that touch to, you know, kind of learn how paint goes off the brush onto the model, then you can make any of this happen. Same with the airbrush. You have the ability to, to uh, you know, with your, your feel of finger, so air versus paint onto the model. As soon as you get that confidence built up, then all of this just comes right off. I mean, you can just dodge right into it and say, okay, today we're going to paint a tank. And you can come out really quick and get a great idea going, right? And turned into something you'd be really proud of, right? You wouldn't be able to do this with a brush and be uh, near as speedy with it and near as satisfied with it as you can with an airbrush. And so if you've been on the fence, you know, I don't know if I want to get an airbrush. I don't know if it's worth it. If I'm just going to be priming and basing with it, well, now I can show you, right? Because literally all we did here was base coats. That's all this has been, right? It's all that's been. It's just very thin base coats and starting and stopping them in different locations, right? I only painted, I painted one base coat all over the whole thing. Then I painted the next base coat only to here. And the next one I'll only paint to here, right? That's it. So it's literally like, okay, just don't take that as far. And the airbrush does all the work because the paint's thin, so it's fading for you, you know? You saw me build up, build up, build up, quick down. Build up, build up, build up, quick down and get that fade. As soon as you can master that, this is, everything's open. Right? And get a great look. And all we got to do is knock this up another bright color in yellow, and this will be exactly where we want it. We can go back on the brush, do our edge highlights, do the details like, you know, paint the, the boxes and the gun and all that. It, it freaks me out when I'm looking at this because I hate gray primer because it looks like I forgot to prime the model. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to prime these again, but it's not a gray primer. I hate gray primer because of that. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. All this is actually primed. We'll go in and I'll probably wind up masking this off and doing some airbrush highlights on the insides just because I don't want to do the brush highlight on such a large area with everything else being airbrushed. Um, these black panels in here. 
So I'll, I'll mask that off and I, and I will actually spend the time to go in and airbrush that, you know, opaque black and then highlight it with some grays and then pick it out just like we've done, you know, our metallic black armor on our dudes, right? So we'll go in and, and treat it like the non-metallic black that we've got going on there, like black steel, and we'll do those inserts just like that. Right? So we can really get it to all pop. But all in all, you know, vehicles can be pretty quick. They can actually be qu quicker than painting like a squad of dudes because there's not as much infinitesimal detail. I, I was stupid, right? I bought the, or I used like the Lehman Russ cable or something, I think, and, you know, smoke launchers and gas cans and stupid toolboxes and shit because I like the feel of it being a used tank. Um, if you didn't put any of that shit on there, then you really just paint the storm bolter. And if you had bought the Forge World icons, paint the doors. Other than that, you really don't even have to do any of that. You could literally just spray it, paint, paint the storm bolter, and be done. You know? With something like this. Probably the tracks a little bit. You're probably going to put at least an Aquila somewhere on the tank at some point. You know? Unless you're a filthy heretic and you put a Chaos Star, you bastages. Don't test this out on a storm blade. Why not, Wicked? Just repaint it. Try this black and white pre-shade on a purple Emperor Children tank, but the purple you put over it was not thin enough and you didn't have a good brush control, so it was a waste of time. Not sure how to fix that, too. Um, probably if you've gone too opaque with your color, you just didn't have the feel for it, Wicked, then you would just start going with deeper purples, lighter purples, and work up the other way. The other way where you're not worried about pre-shade. Just like we paint miniatures, you know, sometimes you see me go through and pre-shade, and sometimes you're not. And, you know, here's a, you know, a, a, a pre-shaded model versus a not pre-shaded model, right? So it doesn't matter. Right? You still get great in-game. Right? So the one on the left, we didn't appreciate these guys. It's just airbrush. Darker to lighter airbrush. Like we would, the kind of your normal dark to light. Don't worry about lighting. You're just painting a model. So there's that. And here's appreciated. Right? So you can go through and pick out your non-metallics and you know where your lights are because we appreciated it. We used a little bit of that appreciate on the flesh and everything. So you can make it work both ways. So if I had gone through and appreciated this and then gone back, say, and it was too opaque at the end, then literally you just switch to this mentality and you start going darker paints, lighter paints and fix it. You know, you're never stuck, right? You can always fix it just because your first plan of attack kind of fell apart with contact with the enemy. Change your strategy, right? Change your tactics and switch gears. You can do it both. I mean, e both will look equally great. It's not like one takes you to a totally different dimension of how it's going to look at the end. You can make them look the same, right? So it's really just, you know, work on it and, and get comfortable fixing mistakes, right? Don't treat it like, oh, damn it, I fucked up and get so bummed out you don't want to touch the model again. That's that's the biggest problem that we have in this this painting world of ours, art in general, is that you feel like you set out with a goal in mind, and when it fell apart because either you didn't have the right knowledge, or it's the first time you'd done it, just didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, or the paints didn't work for you, your airbrush fucked up, whatever it is, just get into the frame of mind. I can fix anything. Keep telling yourself, I can literally fix anything. Right? Turn it into battle damage. Uh, if the paint's too thick, then uh, that's the one that's tough, but it doesn't sound like you're in that, that problem. If the paint's too thick, layering more paint on it, not necessarily the answer. Stripping it sucks. Maybe that's the answer. You can always fix it. The worst case scenario is you got to strip a model and start over. And I've literally never gotten to that point. Never gotten to that point. Yeah, Sapper Steve, I tell you. Well, it's because we get that fear of, of failure, right? I mean, you really do. You start off. I mean, think about it streaming. You know, I go in on a model, and if the airbrush hates us, you know, Kenny and I will sit there, and you'll see our airbrush sputter on us. What's the worst thing in the world? We have a crowd of 200 people that are sitting here watching us fuck up. <laughs> that sucks, right? Especially when you're trying to teach people how to do something. You know, so you imagine if the airbrush stopped working on me and we didn't really get a good result on this, you'd be like, meh, 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 you know, but you still got to just push after it, right? You just got to know that shit's going to happen. You're going to mess up. You're going to, your brush is going to, you know, flip, you're going to have palsy and, and freak out. And you're going to get a brush stroke across the face of the model and you're going to be like, oh, I got to redo that now. Are you kidding me? Just roll with the punches, man. If you're working thin, work with thin paints on the freaking airbrush, work with thin paints on your brush fucking up is easy to fix because it's never a big thick glob of paint and it never takes a lot to scrape it off or even take a watery brush and get it off or paint the hell over it man even if you've got to go back and paint another area because you screwed up entirely and i've had to do that you've watched me do that before and you just go back over it because the paints the only time we've stripped paint on this entire stream is when we did erebus's or uh yeah uh erebus's cloak not erebus uh, he's a word bearer um the the emperor's children guy Starts with an E. Anyway, when we did his white cloak, and uh, and we screwed up the white cloak, 
right? And, and I felt like I was getting too much texture on there. And so I put the airbrush cleaner on and we stripped the cloak and repainted the cloak. The only time. So I, I lied. I have stripped back that part of that model because I just wasn't happy with it. It was for a client. It was for Mathis. I was not going to let that go out the door without actually fixing Eidolon. Yeah, wicked. You know, so we redid Eidolon's cloak and we wiped it down and got all the paint off of it. So they, hey, Melonhead, what's going on? We're about to, we're about to tune out. It's only 1130, man. That's only four hours. That's about what we normally do. I've had a blast tonight, man. It's been great. Yeah, wicked. I mean, anything's fixable. And, you know, you can you can always save yourself by just taking and learning patience and working thin. Everything I do is about working thin, you know, and I'm and there's plenty of times where I'm not happy with the way the paint looks as I put it on the model because I'm working too thin. But I don't thicken it up. I resist the urge to thicken the paint up. I just layer and layer and layer because I know that I can always fix it if I don't like the color. You know, yesterday we did the, the octopus, right? And we went in on the octopus and I had no idea what I really wanted to do on the uh, the mall of this guy, right? After I had gotten done with doing the suckers, right? And highlighting up the suckers, we went in and started painting this maw and the teeth and I had no idea. Hey, let's go for purple and magenta on the gums and then we blew on the tongue and just work freaking thin because I don't even know if I'm gonna like the colors. But I can't tell until I get it all done, you know? And luckily, I think it looks great. You know, I think it was the perfect combo to put in here and make it look both grotesque, but not so far out of our color range that it was like a spotlight, you know, because there's so much going on on this model. You know, I don't want to have one area be like a beacon that draws away from everything else. So I think it worked great. But again, it was I you have fearlessness because you're working thin. So you're like, yeah, screw it. Let's go for it. Purple. Bang. If you don't like it, you put another color over it and all you lost is some time. But you take the risk and you throw it together and you make it work. Right? So again, it's, you know, saying work fearless and do staging things right. You know, I mean, I talk about it a million times a day, generally, you know, like Pour the resin on the base first and get your color of the resin done before you work all the rest of the base up so you don't waste all that time. Figure out how the water is going to look once the water's done and you're happy with it or not happy. Maybe, well, you're going to have to be happy with it or, or you throw it away because with resin, you're not fixing it. So in this case, you just I knew what I wanted. I wanted green murky water, but until the water was done, I didn't want to spend all the time to do the rest of the base because I might have to go back and retreat into different colors if the green was too bright or too dark and it wouldn't work. So I haven't gone back and done all of the stone other than the very light. And I did some demo stuff with powders and things. So we've, we've kind of cheated the system here, you know, but once I got the green done, then I can start painting the wire up to highlight it with the oranges and stuff and do all the rest of my detail work on here, as opposed to working one, working it all up together to the point to where, you know, it's close to being finished and then being really bummed out because, you know, one of the colors didn't really work the way I wanted it to, you know, it's just taking in those steps. And again, work fearless. Remember when we painted these wings? You guys remember? We painted the inside of these wings gold. That's what we were going for. We wanted gold on the armature, gold on the inside feathers, and red on the outside. That's how we did this originally. And uh, and we hated it, right? I was I was totally bummed with it. And we had airbrushed that gold and run it really thin, but it was still a metallic paint. So it was still thicker than not, but I was able to fix it. We didn't strip it. I just went over it very lightly, glazing it with the greens to knock the gold down, and then started airbrushing the highlights on. So this is all over that thick metallic gold and I was still able to bring it right back where we needed it. You know, I had to go back cause we had a little bit of gray or uh, gold overspray on the red. So I had to go back in with the mahogany and kind of glaze the mahogany over the gold to retreat that gold overspray in, but I never had to redo the red, you know, but again, it's just a matter of time. And this is, and I'm so glad I did. Right. But it's all because I was working thin because now I'm very happy with these wings. They're really going to come out nice. They're going to do exactly what I needed the model to do. They added another color to our palette, which helps us out with the whole army. Now I got this bright green I can work with as opposed to just the turquoises, you know? So a lot of times out of your mistakes comes really cool things. If you just stick with it, keep your head in the right place. Still one more name is disgusting and, and amazing in equal measure. I think that wins. I think that's what we were going for. Disgusting and amazing in equal measure wins. I'm okay with that. I'm very happy with this guy. I think that uh, he's going to look amazing. Now I think the problem I'm going to have is how to make a base that is that does it justice, but doesn't overtake it, right? Like part of me wants to pour a resin base and have him set inside resin, you know, like splashing in the water. But I, then it's like, fuck, dude, that's how much do am I want to spend on this one model? I got a whole army out of paint for Depicon, so you know, I'm happy with the way he is right now. We might just go simple bases. I don't know. I haven't figured that out. He's a big damn model. He goes on a big, he goes on the same base. Nice, I think. Big, whatever this is, 80 millimeter maybe? Yeah, probably 80 millimeter. But he has to sit on something like this, too. 
I gotta figure out how to make all that work. Just happy little accidents, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. I'm not doing my Rob Boss very well. Just have happy little accidents. Put a happy little tree. Some birds. Get some birds on the side of your tank. You just do it your way. Just remember this art is all about you having fun. You do what you like. Grab whatever brush you think is going to work for you. Put that paint on here. In a happy little bush. Right? Smoke bowl. <laughs> I feel like that's what every next line out of his mouth is going to be. Smoke bowl. <laughs> Happy little shell impact right over here. Little machine gun emplacement takes care of all your enemies. Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. You know, you're with me, right? <laughs> well, guys, I have had an absolutely amazing Friday as always. You guys have torn it up once again. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you guys so much for all the new followers, all the new subs. The love that poured in at the beginning of the stream was tremendous as always. Uh, thank you again for tuning in for both Rob and Kenny. If you've made it through the entire Long War Convoy tonight and made it to me and stuck with us all the way through this, you're a trooper. Beyond belief, an absolute trooper. Every single one of you guys for hanging out with us in our little corner of the internet. We love you more every day. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be back again on Sunday. We do our Sunday stream regularly now. I'm at noon Pacific, so that's 1 o'clock my time in Mountain, uh, but noon Pacific. And uh, we'll go as long. Uh, Mike Haspel comes on after us. Uh, so we generally go about four hours. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun. We'll probably work a little bit more on this tank then. Uh, and I don't know what else we'll do. It depends on what else I get prepped. we still got some work to do on our Hulk guy, obviously. I've been painting the Hulk. I've got a lot of work up on his skin that i got to do to bring it up like we did the chest here. So uh, we'll be working on some of him maybe. we got all sorts of stuff. i got lots of commission work to show you. So uh, as always, tons of fun to be had. Uh, if I don't get to see you again on Sunday, have a great weekend. Be safe. Don't do anything we wouldn't do. We are back on Tuesday after that, so we'll see you next week for sure. Again, thank you so much. All the love. Adios, folks. Take care. <laughs> Hashtag sweaty. <laughs>